Our friends and storytellers telling you a story through Dungeons and Dragons. So uh, this week is a little different because uh, I am traveling and they are still in the studio. Uh, so just bear with us if things don't work out quite like we hope they will. But uh, we'll figure it out in due time. So uh, where we last left off, the party had uh, succeeded on their mission to figure out what happened to the uh, the weapons dealer for the rebellion in Lirindale, uh and why they went silent. They struck a blow to get her as a sort of persuasion tactic and uh, got the smuggling operation reestablished with the help of a very small movement called the Circle Breakers, a slave rebellion of sorts, and some funding from, and help from a couple different sources. They uh, took the first shipment with them, along with uh, four of the Circle Breakers, to begin learning the ropes and uh, you know start helping establish you know uh, logistics along the way. So they made their way uh, across the desert, uh, facing a few different dangers along the way, including uh, a soldier who is a finger, a which is like a secret police of Larendel, who revealed that. The weapon supply was disrupted in like by a secret effort of the crown in Lirandale in the first place. So they made their way uh, across the desert, finally reaching Tir Garash, the port city, where they made contact with uh, someone they were referred to as Captain Othrin, a very strange, dark. Um, sort of morbid-esque character uh, who talked very creepily and basically explained that he does his smuggling operation by procuring bodies and faking paperwork to get those bodies to be <coughs> taken home into Lirindale. And so uh, the party, still a little creeped out, still agreed, and uh, got on the ship and started making their way north. Along the way, Zenoa investigated the bodies and found a variety of uh, causes of death, apparently. And But they, they made their way north uh, seemingly without incident. Uh, along the way, Stoic also reached out to Lady Empress to reach out to someone in Karandia to try to make contact with the Hurricane Sisters to try and see if they could procure the eyeball that was lost uh, that had some dark fire in it uh, from back on the original sailing trip into Al Raqqa. So, um, as they progressed on this sailing journey, they uh, had a lot of interesting conversations and talked through some things, and then uh, about nine days, about halfway, about nine days into their journey, uh, Zenoa notices something odd about the medallion around Captain Othrin's neck, a, a medallion seemingly of uh, the goddess of death, Morin, which, whose symbol is also on the front of the main sails. But she is able to determine, also with the, the casting of uh, True Sight, she's able to determine that it is an illusion. And after some, uh, you know, kind of thinking it through, she takes a pretty big risk and reaches out and dispels the magic on the medallion, dissipating the illusion. So as we pick things back up, uh, she has just done this, revealing the a different symbol made up of finely crafted, but made up of several different metals. Uh, a symbol that she was able to recognize as uh, the symbol of Mediti, the god of creativity, humor, action, and fun. And as she does this, <clears throat> the uh, and the it dissipates you all see uh, I don't know where you guys are at the moment uh, or where you'd like to be but I, I I'm on the deck far. yeah 
And you see, as she reaches up and does this with the medallion, you see the entire crew stop and go silent and look at this, this interaction. Oh, I'm looking at it, too. <clears throat> yeah, I tense up yeah. just, to, just in case I need to start defending myself and other people. I just, like, kind of tense and put my hands towards my weapons. The big old, like, do, shock look on my face. Do I notice people go... <clears throat> Oh yeah, so? it went from like movement and talking and all the all the sounds of the ship to silent. It's like every her every head turns to you guys. Huh. <laughs> That's a really weird thing to lie about. <laughs> you see him like slowly look down at the at the amulet. <laughs> And then, like, look back up slowly with that kind of grim look in his dark eyes on you. And there's this moment of tense silence as his, his eyes sort of drill into yours. And Ornolf, who's standing at the helm next to him, he was kind of watching also kind of silently and just, you know, kind of looks at the captain and is like, Well, I get the chick is up. And you just suddenly hear all throughout the crew bursts of laughter. <laughs> <laughs> As you just hear all of them suddenly like pointing at you guys. They're like, ah! <laughs> 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 like you hear a couple people say, like, maybe you're <clears throat> laughing at you. <laughs> and like on the captain, he was just still looking at you. You just see the very slightest, like, <laughs> <laughs> the very slightest grin kind of creep onto his face. <laughs> you got us! Good one! I'm thinking, ah, these could have been my people. <laughs> Secretly disappointed. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. And as you see this, uh, as the laughter kind of dies down, you see the captain, you know, uh, say... Yes, like kind of calling out loudly for the crew, like, yes, you should have seen them in the negotiations. <laughs> I believe they were thoroughly creeped out. And I'll look back at you two. <laughs> hey, you're right. We were creeped out. Yeah, I'm still creeped out. Yeah. <laughs> You had us, I, I thought you were actually going to do dead bodies. That's, oh man, that's a relief. How are you actually sneaking this into the country? No, Sarah, they're dead. No, no, I mean, we, this, the whole thing's been a ruse the whole time. Right? Yes, they're completely fake. See? Doesn't have the highest, the highest insight. It's decent, but it's not great. Yeah. So now, as you've investigated, you know that's not true at all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no. We'll talk about it later. Okay. It's all right. Not everyone gets my morbid sense of humor. Some things are making sense now. The crew was a little bit more um, jovial than I had expected. We're all full of joy. Yep. First word that came to my mind. Well, what now? <laughs> <laughs> so, is this what you guys do? You uh, hide people with dead bodies and sneak them into countries and all under the guise of Morin, but actually not Morin. Indeed. It is what I said before to you was true, that you would be surprised how unwilling someone is to attack a ship carrying the symbol of the goddess of death and one of her priesthood. And even more so, our inspectors hesitate 
hesitant to inspect too closely a dead body. Okay. <clears throat> I, um, question for you. Uh, what do you get out of this other than some money and a laugh? I would not be surprised if someone who is not a follower would not understand but it began with my wife. I was a sailor as a younger man and as I grew older I did well for myself as a merchant. But then my wife began to have a health problem. First, the healer told my wife that she was morbidly obese, as if she did not already have enough on her plate. There's like this awkward pause. <laughs> huh. But then I imagine she became sick of life and became ill enough to die. But before she did, she made me promise that whatever happened, she would, that I would find a way to use her body in playing some sort of prank. We had heard of the hmm, oppressions in Lirandil, and often thought to ourselves, speculating on many a night how much fun followers of Mediti could possibly have in such a place, playing tricks upon the crown and his underlings. And so, when she died, I just devised this method of Sneaking things in under their nose. Laughing in private at a joke they'll never hear. You may laugh now. I will admit that uh, that is a level of humor that is above my head. Um, but I do see the poetry in uh, in this uh, plan of yours, in your long-form joke, as it were. It is elegant and weird. But I feel like that fits well. You might also say... How should I put it? And Ornolf actually chips, chimes in. He's like, You could say we're making a mockery of the crown. And honestly, that is... Perhaps the best use of one's time. Mm -hmm. Is to make a mockery of their joke of a rain. It is especially delicious as Mediti, its worship, is banned throughout the country. And to imagine Mediti and followers are undermining the very uh, pillars they're trying to hold up. As feeble as they are. And if the pillars should ever crumble, you can stand. We in... shall. We will stand upon the rubble and laugh. Mm -hmm. Yes. It is a fitting punchline for a joke. Agreed. I thought so. <coughs> and so did these other followers. He gestures to the rest of the crew. Well, then I am even more glad we have met. 
It is one thing to think that you've met someone who is doing just the noble act of taking the bodies to their final resting place, but... The added, uh, burn underneath feels very satisfying. What? Hmm. Sir has never removed her hands from her weapons, by the way! <laughs> <laughs> She's just been sitting this whole time, hands on her knives, just like, ha-ha, ha-ha-ha. <laughs> Great. Um, give me, like, 15 minutes. I need to swim in this ocean and get all of the anxiety nerves out of my system. Have fun. As you wish. <laughs> Keep talking. <laughs> and so just, like, peels out, and she's just like, ooh, ooh. Like, she's just trying to get all, like, the nerves out of her system because she was ready to, like, fight everybody on the ship. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, not again, not again. <laughs> I do not want to have to like figure out how to survive a ship again. <laughs> Makes sense. Well, okay then. Back to work. <laughs> uh, start helping the crew. Do your thing. So. Uh... To continue on sailing, uh, if there's nothing else you guys would like to do. Um, I, I would like to check back. How many days has it been since I contacted Entress? Nine. Yeah, I'd like to check back in with Entress. <laughs> <laughs> All right. As of like three days ago or four days ago. <laughs> um, yeah, I'd like to check back with her and just... Um, Entress, do you have any news on the procurement of the dark fire from the Hurricane Sisters. Well, well, for something so important, you certainly did delay it long enough <laughs> for following up. I apologize. We are currently at sea and the, the days got away from me. The reception's not that great. <laughs> Well, <laughs> uh, yes, sea travel. There's not very much downtime there, is there? <laughs> no. <laughs> not with this group. <clears throat> well, I hope it was actually that pressing. It cost quite a lot, as I understand it. Oh, to receive, to receive the item, but you did get it from them. Well, of course I did. You said it was important. Oh, you are wonderful, and I owe you greatly. I know. I'm going to remember that you said that. <laughs> I'm sure you will. <laughs> but yes, I did talk to Lord Silverhays, the new governor who replaced Farissa when she was crap-bound. I'd only met him once at her coronation, but he was intrigued at establishing a relationship. There are advantages to having multiple valuable resources mined in one's territory. I don't know if I quite follow. Well, you are, you've been to Lassa, you understand there are mines there that are quite lucrative. Yes. There are advantages to being the governess of the province of such wealthy resources. Ah, I understand. And how much... How much did that little bobble set you back? Well, don't you worry your tough little tusks about that right now. <laughs> <laughs> you just focus on the important world saving work at hand for you. Thank you, and we're gonna try and get back. <coughs> as soon as we can, once we figure out this Lirendel issue. The 
but don't be a stranger. It's always a joy when I feel you in my head. <laughs> I don't think there was no question there. <laughs> Um, at some point, I will also um, update uh, Endurial. Like, we don't have to role play it, but I'll just let him know that the eyeball has been retrieved and is safe hands in Karandia. Um, okay. So, and we will try to get that to Hadressa or him when we're able. Okay. Okay. He assures you that he will. Yeah, between. You and Andriel and Anthrus are able to like figure out exactly where it's going, and and he assures you that it will be taken care of. Okay. As soon as possible. <laughs> so one more piece off the board. Yep. <laughs> I'll relay that news to the rest of you as well. That it's. <sighs> That's good news. It's been it's been taken care of, but I'm running out. I'm just, I'm running a pretty large debt on favors I owe people at the moment, so we will have to find a way to repay our friend. Mm -hmm. So, I know you haven't met her. Did you ever meet Enthrus? Mm -hmm. I didn't think you had. She's from Crania? Yes. Yeah. I can take on a little bit of the Lady Enthrus that. I'm sure you would not mind at all. Not even a little bit. <laughs> oh, it's. Guys, well, she's a beautiful woman. No, I didn't know if there was some, I don't know, backstory there. Oh, she wants to just fuck the whole world. <laughs> oh. Okay. Yeah. I don't think that's really true. I just think she's a big flirt. Okay. Well, if she wants to flirt with me, I am fine with that. <laughs> <laughs> just so you don't have to do it alone, sweetie. <laughs> That's good, though, that we've got the, uh, I guess, the eye back out on our side for now. Yes. It doesn't really solve anything, but it certainly puts one less uh, anxiety out into the world. And we at least cleaned up one of many messes we've made <laughs> for now. I feel much better about it. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, we can trust... Who this is with now, though. Like this. Yes. Okay. Yes, Anthrus is. Is actually with Anthrus? Is she does she in possession of it? Um. Yes, but I have a feeling that she's going to meet up with our other contacts, and let's just say there's a very safe place, or safe plane, you could even say, that it'll be moved to. Mm -hmm. So. Is a conversation that we will need to have as the four of us at some point. What do you mean? Regarding. Well, we kind of had it. Sure, we had it. Uh, about where you all see yourselves in our little group, and if you want to take on more responsibility, as it were. You in particular. What sort of responsibilities do you have in this? Uh, we are. I had my conversation with her. I'm watching. We are called to answer <laughs> certain uh, requests, and we follow those requests for the greater good. But it is a commitment that. Uh, cannot easily be broken once committed to. You don't just get to walk away and say you're done. Did you all meet through this organization or before then? Not initially, no. We met at the bar, no, tavern. Yeah, we um, well, we kind of made a name for ourselves in Crandia, and we're then approached and vetted. I guess you could say. Mm -hmm. By Adressa. By Adressa. Mm -hmm. And then after we saved Karandia from um, a couple of evil necromancers. And the giant, giant undead thing. Yeah. We 
were then invited to become members to continue that type of work. So, but unfortunately that makes every mess our mess in a way. Any mess that's big enough to affect countries or the world or the planes, um, we seem to have to go investigate and see if we can assist in any way. Now, have anyone besides you? No. Oh, there's other members. I'm sure there are, yes. So. But like any good organization, as you know, the pockets don't always know what the head is doing. I don't know, you said you wanted to know if, I can't remember exactly what we talked about, but after I shared everything with you guys, everything, I, I still don't know what my choices, I guess, because I want to be with you guys. I want to stay with you guys, which makes me want to care more about this Hedressa person and everything she wants from you, I guess. You can care about the cause without caring about her, trust me. <laughs> Well, that's what I'm saying. I care about you all. I want to care more about this cause because I care about you guys, but... I just don't... I just don't know what's gonna happen... yet. None of us do. Mm -hmm. That's life. Me personally, I just... I know I can't walk away <clears throat> if there's something I can do to help. And no, I, I envy that about you. Sometimes I really wish I could. I'm sorry then. You stayed because I stayed. And I hope because help is needed. I remember that question very well. You didn't answer until I did. No, I wasn't going to let you do it alone. Hmm. You're better than me. It's not about being better. It's just being sure. What are your thoughts, sir? Well, we have to figure out Lirendil first. But that's just it. You're in, involved in it, whether you realize it or not, yeah. more so than she is, because Lirendil is a huge piece to the puzzle that we're trying to solve. And by helping Lirendil, you're just going to become more and more involved with us in this in this group. Well, it seems like I've got more involvement than even I I knew with. The Astral Raven and uh, World Spider and all the stuff that I didn't know about before. I mean, if it's a, a fight that needs to happen, I am absolutely in. Um, I don't know, there's been a lot that's obviously changed for me over the past few weeks, and I just have to take it one step at a time. I'm, I'm with you guys for as long as I'm with you guys. That's uh, beyond Lirendil, then that's great. Once we get back to Lirendil, you don't want to stay? Stay in with Lirendil? I'm going to finish Lirindale? the fight. No, yeah, I'm going to finish the fight. No, that's what I was saying. Is after we win and get the, the, get the, the crown out of power, we can make that decision then on what happens next. But I'm, just, I'm seeing the fight through. But you're open to leaving afterwards. Oh, yeah. That the fight will be done. At least that fight. And what if you're called away before the fight is over? 
Mm. That is the thing. You cannot be the servant of two masters. Mm-hmm. Well, as far as I know right now, I'm, dealing, I'm only the servant of... Lirindil of um, Adris. I don't think I've been extended an official offer to anything. No, but it is something that I want you to keep in mind. Yeah, and I'll keep it in mind when the time comes and that offer happens I will figure out what my place in this whole mess will be yeah you don't have to decide today but the decision would need to be made sooner rather than later I know I know you back to me or whatever when her dresser was talking to you guys about me but I did the stoics right about me I just don't think I'm ready yet and maybe I will be but not today I disagree about you being ready you are ready but are you willing That is the only question that you have to answer. And that answer does not have to be today. Yeah, we'll see. But when we get back, we're going to be right in the thick of it. Mm-hmm. I mean, maybe that'll help you make your decision when you learn more about what it is we're really trying to stop, because to be honest, we don't really know ourselves. If Larry does such a big part of it, are there any other rebels that are under Hedressa's thumb? I mean, you know, you raise a good <laughs> question. You, you don't know? Oh, I've raised that question many times. They don't Hadrasa does not like to express any details or helpful information you, most you of the time. You said when you met her that you felt like she knew everything about you already? I didn't feel that way. She did. And that answers your question. She knows everything. She hears everything. She sees everything. It doesn't tell me how many numbers there are within the rebellion. It doesn't. But who are you in the grand scheme of the world to have so much known about you? Singular you in a giant country, in a giant continent, that she knows everything about you. That takes a lot of eyes and a lot of ears to know. From what I've figured out, or best I can gather, Adressa has a huge network, and there are there are many members of the organization. It's just none of them quite have the fighting prowess that we do. So they're they help in other ways <coughs> and assist us. And I'm sure there are, are small other groups that are combat ready like we are but mm -hmm. we can't expect much warrior support from any of the agents in Lirendel. I mean I'm sure there there's some because there's eyes and ears but I doubt that any of them would be any good in a fight so that part kind of falls on us it sounds like they may rely on you guys more than I initially thought more than we think, too. Espionage, fighting, like. The grand all, secrets of the yeah, universe. Yeah, all, all that stuff kind of falls on us. Just another day. So that's why you came to Lear and Dill, was because they told you to. That's what brought you through the Helterlands. Where we met. We were already on mission. Oh, 
also a Sura and Stoic. You could roll a history check if you'd like. Mm. <laughs> information incoming. That dice is going to be dice today. Let me core. No. Not that one. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't roll well either. Oh no. Nine. <laughs> Four. <laughs> a combined 13. You know, it's. <laughs> Next. <laughs> All my shit's a deception. <laughs> I can't recall shit. I'd like to tell you more. I just can't remember at the moment. <laughs> my, my mind's getting a little fuzzy here. It might be from all the salt water I gagged on earlier when I was trying to swim. It's best to close your mouth while... I don't know if you all know this, but when I swim, I am incredibly top-heavy. Like, my horns, like, do sink into the water a little bit. That's fair. You have to, like, to compensate, I guess. Yeah, they don't yeah. float. Yeah. <laughs> Doing a good job, though. Thank you. you. better, yeah. Thank you. I, uh, I don't panic dog paddle anymore. So that's exciting. It's a big step. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. She does keep scaring away all the fish, though. Hey, you've been trying to fish. I, I try to make sure that it's on the side of the boat you do not have your little stick on. <laughs> I don't... Have you watched other people swim? What do you mean? Like, in general or specifically? In general. No, not really. I've been trying to figure it out. Okay, you should. And you might notice it's kind of silent when they <laughs> swim. Less chaotic. I mean, I can usually hear you. It sounds like somebody's washing dishes and, like, there's just a lot of water slapping and splashing. <laughs> You've all had the great pleasure of being inside of my home country for a period of time. I don't know if you noticed, uh -huh. but we are not a water-soluble country. Mm -hmm. We have very finite amount of water, and we don't go buoying ourselves in it. I do... Are you reapplying sand after you get out of swimming? Maybe. <laughs> Wait, <that's> a <laughs> she said it's like smooth for her skin. Listen, I like to exfoliate, okay? <laughs> a little bit of exfoliation is nice. I missed it. You take your morning sand baths. You wear oh, those? That sounds awful. But you know, teach. Just... Touch my skin. It is smooth as fuck. Wait, let me touch it. <laughs> Soft, right? Yeah. <laughs> we'll talk. <laughs> like, through the skin at what cost? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh. So you've got a little bit of microdermabrasion happening. It is fine. Yeah. It's just very popular in the big cities now. <laughs> Natural for years. Mm -hmm. Stand in a sandstorm and pray you don't die. Smooth as hell when you get on the other side. That's a hell of a beauty routine. I don't know if you noticed, but Alrockans are stunning beauties. No. Do you notice? Yeah, sure. Moroccans are stunning beauties. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, yes, absolutely. Thank you. Yeah. It was a mild way to get the compliment. Do you know how difficult it is to get the compliment around here? Every once in a while, I just want someone to be like, Sir, you look so nice today. Stoic. Stoic's not the only one doing some fishing. <laughs> Stoic also took that opportunity for her to focus on him to leave at that moment and went to go fishing. <laughs> I do look back around and try to make a joke. He's and gone. Like... <laughs> well, well, they need to be back up on the deck. See you guys. Oh my gosh, men. <laughs> I look at Sarah and be like, that's your cue. <laughs> I'm not even flirting with him. I just want a legitimate compliment. Yeah. <laughs> if I was flirting with him, I would make him very uncomfortable. My style of flirting is make them aggressively uncomfortable. It's a legitimate compliment if you force it out of him. <laughs> Just asking. <laughs> asking for a friend. <laughs> Certainly a compliment to me. <laughs> so I had to, like, you know, strong arm and not compliment mm -hmm. out of somebody. It is fine. I'll make a concerted effort, too. Thank you. Yeah. Would you you like do look lovely. Thank you. Would you like it to reciprocate it? Oh, you don't have to. I'm okay. Sure. Yeah. 
Should I compliment your skills, your prowess, your intelligence? You don't have to compliment anything. It's okay. <laughs> Still really like your hair. Really? Yeah. Why it's kind of growing out a little bit. Uh, I dig it. I like this kind of like faded vibe. It has like a little bit of mysterious aura to it. It's like, hmm. It's kind of nice to have my natural hair color back. Yeah? Yeah. I should probably dye it again though. Got a few more days. Yeah. See how you feel about it. Okay. We'll figure it out. <laughs> You're about to be a dead body, so I mean, like, you know. It doesn't look too, like, skunky. Mm -mm. Okay. No. I think if it was a bit longer, it might have a slight skunky quality, but I don't think necessarily that is a bad thing either. I actually like the short cut. I might keep it. It looks super cute on you. Thanks. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> I've been considering a haircut of my own, too, but I don't know. Like, it's gonna be a big commitment. That's a lot of hair. I've been growing it for like 15 years, so, you know. You haven't cut it in 15 years? No. You should... I mean, like, Let's get it. a trim. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, 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 it's not like I've, it's gone, like, you know, completely untouched. For I mean, that's dead No, you just, like, yeah, you just cut, like, the last, like, couple inches off, and then you just keep letting it grow. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I've never noticed you cut your own hair. Oh, yeah, I just take a knife and I go... It looks great. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I appreciate it. Just like kind of like squish my my braid a little bit more. <laughs> and I just like. <laughs> <laughs> Episode titled "Girl Talk." <laughs> mm -hmm. Listen, sometimes it feels good just to get a little bit of a compliment. Reminded mm -hmm. that you're strong, you're smart, you're capable, and you look cute while doing it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So I'm saving the world and also keeping up my skincare routine. Yeah. It's really important for me. Sure. So as you continue to uh, continue sailing on for a few more days, um, at around uh, I believe it'd be around day thirteen, uh, stoic as you are sitting there fishing again off the edge. You hear a voice right behind you as you didn't notice him approach Captain O3 and says the time has come <laughs> the deep death approaches oh Sora <laughs> I'm over there like doing like pull ups on the like the rope mesh <laughs> I just am like over here just like just getting trying to get ripped trying to get jacked Huh? What do you want? <laughs> this man needs money. You look great. <laughs> Thank you. I just go over. So, alrighty. So we're about to pay the deep, dark, deepness. You must present a sacrifice. We paid it money last time. We'll just pay it money again. And items. Sure. But and jewels. Yeah. I've still got a couple of those in the bag. I just got the sword. As long as it's adequate to appease it. Yep. I just pull some of the gems out that we still have left over. And I think it was like a thousand gold is what we had thrown in the pot last time. I think so. So I pull out sorted jewels and like a thousand gold. Okay. And then I get it prepped and piled together and I just tell me where to toss it I shall <laughs> and he just kind of stalks off <laughs> great uh, so you're just kind of sitting there like <laughs> holding this bag and you know waiting and you just kind of see like some grins from the crew <laughs> as they walk by you <laughs> <laughs> enjoying the awkward bit. <laughs> After a few minutes, I uh, I just kind of like take uh, like my sleeve and I just kind of like sh like open it up a little bit and I just like stuff everything in there and then I just kind of hold my hand like this and I just start walking around. <laughs> yeah, with a like sizable sack like larger than your head. <laughs> yeah, just like under my armpit, just like. I don't know, I just didn't want to stand there looking like an asshole, so I put it in my armpit and I just started walking around. Yeah, this, yeah, this is 
much better. Yeah. As soon as like really does not know how to like let go and like find some, like their level of humor, she does not understand, and she kind of does not like being laughed at. So she's trying to like save face a little bit, and she's like, "This is not working for me," and I feel super fucking haggard. <laughs> so I just gotta tuck but, it. But as you do that, you hear one of them like call down from the roofs, like, "I made you develop a tumor." <laughs> And you hear a few chuckles, and somebody else is like, oh, you ought to get that looked at. Talk to a healer. Just stand there like, I'm not going to kill anybody. 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 But I do know where they all sleep, and that gives me a level of comfort. Just reminding myself that I do know where everybody sleeps at night. Well, as you uh, kind of continue in this awkwardness, um, you know, over the next... A uh, couple of hours, you see the ocean just slowly turning dark um, to an almost black, uh, dark, dark blue. And start doing like lunges, uh, like but like kettlebell lunges <laughs> with the weight. After a while, like I'm just like trying to make give myself something to do. <laughs> uh, which again it earns com- comments here and there, like. Oh, they have interesting weights there. Wish I could afford those kinds of weights. <laughs> like just lots of just common, you know, comments from the peanut gallery all around you. <laughs> but you do notice even they eventually kind of quiet down a little bit over these dark waters. And you can kind of detect, kind of like what you had on the other ship, there's like a little bit of nervousness, a little bit of seriousness to where you're at. Yeah, and it eventually falls silent, just leaving the sound of the boat cutting through the water and the sound of waves lapping against it, with the ropes and creaks of the ship being the only sound around you. And you see, like, Othrin is just kind of looking out at the water this whole time, and then he finally calls out, It is time. I step forward with the bag and I take two coins out of it, heave the bag in, take the two coins out and I kiss each one. And I say, these were the last kisses I gave to Bear and Easy. And I drop the two coins into the water. So with a splash, like a heavy splash, the, the sack like falls in and just immediately sinks fast into the depths, disappearing quickly. And followed by the two plinks of, of coins uh, splashing into the water and also disappearing quickly. And there's a nervousness of silence as they wait to see if it's acceptable. They wait. They wait some more. And nothing seems to happen. The crew remains nervous for a while longer. Still quiet, still silent for a couple more hours. Until eventually the water start to lighten again just a little bit and return to the deep blue of still deep sea, but not that black depth. And and it's almost like life starts to return to the ship and you start to hear a couple of comments, a little bit of nervous laughs and jokes about it and ribbing each other for being nervous and that sort of thing as as the spirit sort of returns to the ship and the, the the captain just gives you a nod and returns to his cabin. So, right after he returns to his cabin, like after things are clear, but everybody's nerves are still a little heightened, um, I would like to go find Zanoa. <laughs> you went down and inspected the bodies underneath, correct? Full autopsy. Okay. I was wondering 
if you might assist me with something. Sure. And I will have her follow me down to the bodies and do you think we could take one of these cadavers out and place it in a box with another cadaver? Okay, well, what do you have in mind? This captain's really been freaking me out, and I think, I, we know. Need, I think we need to equal the plane a little bit. You're not less freaked out after the whole debacle? The... It still gives me the creeps. But now... I, I thought he would talk differently. Like that, like the talking was all a ruse, but it actually wasn't. <laughs> but now I feel better about the choices I'm about to make. <laughs> what? Okay, what choices are we talking about? Can... Just, just help me move this body into the other box. Why aren't you asking Sarah to do this? <laughs> because you're a cleric, and... Okay. It just... I don't know. <laughs> I thought you'd be, you be on my side of this. Just... Wait, it's good... Yes, do that. Sure. So, okay. We're going to move the body in the other one. I'm going to use disguise self, and I want to disguise myself as the body we just moved. Okay. And then I want to get in the box. Okay. What are you doing? I need you to go tell the captain that you're hearing strange noises coming from underneath the boat. <laughs> know about the pull a prank on Stoic, because this is an opportunity just to leave him there. Honestly, yeah. Don't bring that up! <laughs> Wait. That's why he didn't ask Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> the coffin uh, being one of the ones that you inspected before. <sighs> And you're immediately hit with the the acidic mm -hmm. thing of chemical formaldehyde smell. Yeah. Uh, just kind of bombarding your nostrils for a minute. And you have to take a second and you know, get a hold of it as you adjust and you guys try to find um, you know a nearby roll roll an investigation check uh, with advantage. Okay, okay. It's not bad. Uh, investigation. I have a lot. That's a 15. Okay. Um, yeah, you do find one uh, uh, that, that seems like it was a, it was full of rice and is on the very last little bit. Like there's there's still a little layer at, at the bottom. Yeah. Uh, but it's almost empty. Okay. Wait, what is it almost empty of? Rice. Oh, is that what they're packed in? The bodies? Mm -hmm. No, that's... You, there, there are no empty coffins. There's just... You find a box, like a sizable crate. To put the body into? That's the best you got. For the okay, body. and then I'm going to get in the coffin. <laughs> okay. So yes. the dead body into the rice. <laughs> yes. Oh. That is, why are we tainting good rice? Yeah. I, I thought we could fit two in a coffin, but if the rice works, it's worth it. And... <laughs> Is that because is it's that because it got wet and we need to dry it out? <laughs> <laughs> yes. oh. Save the battery. So, <laughs> so I will cast this guy's self on myself to make myself look like the dead body, and I'm gonna lay in the coffin, and then if you go tell him you've been hearing strange noises. Okay. Now <laughs> I'm gonna lay back. <laughs> okay. I go up under the deck. Where's the captain? Uh, he's in his, his quarters. Okay. What time of day is it? Uh, midday. Okay. I'm gonna help the crew work on the ship for a little bit. <laughs> How long are you leaving me down there? <laughs> <laughs> for like 10 minutes. Okay. I'll wait. 20 minutes. <laughs> And then I'll go. I'll, I'll go to the captain's quarters, knock on the door. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you may enter. I'll just peek my head through the door. Hey, Captain, I really need you for a second. I can't talk to anyone else about this. I need to talk to you. Could you... Can I come in for just a second? I'll close the door. Of course. Okay, I'll close the door. Is anyone else in there? Uh, not at the moment. Okay. I'll walk up to him. 
was just checking on the rice supply downstairs. <laughs> um, I mean, everything below deck is dead, right? I would certainly hope so. That's concerning because I've been hearing stuff down there. It's freaking me out. You're the captain and I just figured you're the one to talk to about that. Could you check it out with me? You seem a bit old to believe in ghost stories. You don't believe in ghosts? Of course I do. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a yes? Roll Okay. I'm a little worried about this part. Oh, I'm bad. <laughs> yeah, none of y'all. Yeah, none of y'all. None of y'all asked me to help. Oh, yeah. That's the one right there. Six. Hey. <laughs> I'm trying to persuade him, but I can't deceive him. <laughs> he kind of looks at you for a second and then just nods and slowly rises up and follows you. <laughs> Okay, thanks. <laughs> and I'll, I'll go first down. It's somewhere, it was coming from over there, and I'll point in Stoic's direction. And I'm, I'm just slowly, because I'm assuming I'd hear them come down. Uh, make a perception check. Okay. I don't. I'm like, Nat 20. <laughs> oh, shoot. I'll say you okay. do that, dude. Yeah, you do. You do hear for a few okay. footsteps coming I'm down. I'm going to lightly scratch on the lid of my coffin. Is that rats? It's possible. You see, kind of slowly approaches it. Hmm. And then I'm just going to slam the lid open and rise out. So... I want you, let's see. Oh, <laughs> yeah, that's what I thought. That's what I thought. Uh-huh. Strength check? Because <laughs> I have none. He's going to fuck you up. He is. He's going to. Let's do, actually, let's, let's make it a dex check. Dex check, okay. Yeah, just straight dexterity. I don't have that either. Because I want to see which thing happens first. <laughs> 13 rule. A five? <laughs> a five. Okay, that's not very fast. No. Uh, so, as you hear the footsteps approach, and, and as, you know, as I know that you watch, um, you see him uh, here, you see him kind of watching and zeroing in on this coffin and the scratching noises. Stoic, as you are about to push open, uh, you feel something. Because Zanoa, you suddenly see, uh, you see him whip out a mace from his cloak and just uh, whack down into the coffin. Like, oh, and shoot! No, no, no. Through the lid. Uh, and do it. <laughs> so, yeah. 13, 13 bludgeoning damage. Oh. Okay. Okay, I'll and take it. Smashes into your chest uh, like suddenly as he raises his mace to, to go for another hit. No, I'm going to Dimension Doors reaction right behind him. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Still looking like a zombie. And just go, boo! And then I'm going to turn back into Stoic. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's going to make another attack. Uh, I at least see this one. So I don't think that's going to No, be that's not going to hit me. <laughs> the first one I got. Yeah, quick, quick step back, back into, into a pile of, of uh, boxes and stuff. But the barrel to missing the mace as he as he whips around and looks at you. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> Stoic, are you okay? <laughs> He's got a pretty strong swing for an old man. <laughs> but I'm fine. <laughs> you owe me a coffin. Well, you weren't supposed to break the coffin. If the dead starts making noise, would you not? 
strike first. <laughs> so yeah, you do I believe would. in ghosts. Okay. <laughs> I did tell you I did. It's just that you got us pretty good with your joke, and so I thought it would only be fair. I will forgive you under the circumstances. <laughs> But where is the corpse? <laughs> oh, it's over here. And then I'm going to pull it out of the box of rice. <laughs> Perhaps unwise to waste good food. She can make more. <laughs> I, I, I can. Yeah. I'm sure the men will appreciate that. I'm going to go do that. Carry on. He says, then turns around and stalks off. Can you decontaminate food as well? Uh, like purified food water? I might like, can, oh. but I feel like That's I always point. just take. I always just, just take create it. Yeah, you sure. But it. you could also purify the rice because the rice is long term food. Like you can store that for a really long time. I'm gonna, I'm gonna spend the rest of the trip trying to repair the cough. <laughs> <laughs> be it's woodworking um yeah you're not you're not skilled in woodworking right no <laughs> not at all <laughs> carpentry nope yeah uh that's that's gonna be a uh we'll, we'll call it a what are you trying to do repair the car carpentry. oh, yeah. oh could i assist him and use mending at all I don't know yes that's... sure okay yeah. that would be thank you yeah, y'all have magic. <laughs> well, you're gonna see me. Yeah, the real you just see me yeah. struggling, not knowing what I'm doing. Let me get that for you. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, and it is shattered. It's pretty messed up with that. that yeah. um, <laughs> we got time to do a bunch of little tiny mends. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. With the mending, you're able to eventually make it work and then get the corpse back out of it. You eventually find that the uh, crew still doesn't seem willing to eat rice that a dead body's in, uh, no. even if you purify it, so to speak, sort of about like filtering urine. Um, <laughs> you know, it's like still not great uh, as an idea. Um, Sorry, I'm hearing weird noises behind me. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, but you eventually, uh, assuming you create some food and, and yeah, uh, you know, kind of make it up to them, the word quickly spreads of your joke, which they all appreciate. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, and you spend uh, the remaining days of your voyage just kind of doing as you will and hearing stories with the crew who are a little more free now and, and telling stories of funny things and jokes and um, you know just just yeah just trading stories it's definitely one of the happier crews you've ever met even if it's more harsh humor it's more kind of edgy humor more morbid and, and dark as humor goes um you know, but there's no doubt that they they seem happy. Um, nice. You know, and <clears throat> it's not long. Toward the end of your journey, maybe about a day out from when you assume you'll reach last port, that the call comes down from the crow's nest of seeing sails. Uh, that are approaching you and after looking through the, the his spyglass the captain announces that it seems to be uh, one of the people's fleet mm -hmm. the people's armada is approaching and he says he basically explains this is normal because any incoming ship is typically inspected so it's time for you guys to hide. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> cool. Great. Yep. Looking forward to this. I'm uh, assuming we establish with the captain where we're going to be hiding. 
Okay. Because it was kind of his responsibility. <laughs> he was going to smudge us. Yeah. Okay. But we're hiding in the coffins. Yeah? Yeah. So he says, please follow me. Okay. And he leads you and the circle breakers down below deck. Um, <clears throat> as you as you kind of fall in beside where all the all the coffins are lined up, he says, "Who would like to be first? I've already been in there. I'll do it. Are you certain? Oh well, yeah. I wouldn't have suggested otherwise. How thorough are these inspections? How convincing do we need to be? I suppose we'll find out, won't we? I can make us pretty convincing. Oh, do you have feigned up? Yeah. But you don't do that? I mean, I mean if y'all are kind of How long does it last? <sighs> Ten, no, an hour. See, because I was saying anything about using pass without a trace if we needed to do like a. If we're going to be hiding underneath it, but. It, it, How much time before they get to us? How much time do we have? Uh, at the rate they're going, about an hour. Oh, okay. <coughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, just wait a little bit. And Are you sure? I mean... Well, let's have him put me first, and we'll see what <laughs> it looks like, and then you guys make yeah. a decision. What he's going to do? Yeah. All right. Well, I should say, he'd probably lead you down maybe about half an hour out, like, as it's okay. clear they're coming. Okay. Down. So you're probably about half an hour, he would guess. Okay. Oh. Okay. How close do we have to be to you for the casting? I mean, I I just I wanted to be able to I can ritually cast it, which would take me ten minutes. But if I need to not ritually cast a couple of us as well, are you saying how close you need to be? Yeah, how physically close to you do we need to be for that? Is it? I don't. Do you need to I just touch us? you, yeah, and it will last for an hour. Okay. Then you'll be the last one to go in. Mm -hmm. Are you sure you're okay with that? I feel like. I trust you. Yeah. Okay. It gets us past all of this. Because you're going to be out for an hour. That uh, makes me a little nervous. <laughs> yeah. You know what you're I doing. mean, I, I could not, or I, I don't know, we could just get him to wake us up. But you're going to have to cast it nine times. Or That's eight. true. No. Is it nine? Eight? Nine. It's nine, because, yeah, of the circle breakers. Uh-huh. Are you That's hiding a us... Magic. You know what? Are you hiding us under the, like, on a false bottom, or are you hiding us in the caskets? As a dead body. You will be in the casket. Hmm. What? Well, that, that pain death would work a lot better for that. Well... We're pretty good actors. I think we can pull it off. I'm, I'm not. But I do think <clears throat> that the circle breakers may lose their nerve. And so it may not be bad to cast it on them. Okay. And let us. We've been in these situations before. I think we can keep our cool. Without breaking. What about you? I mean, I... I yeah. can do it too if you want me to. Yeah, I'm fine with that. I know you're not comfortable in small spaces. I can manage it. Okay. That's why pain death would be a lot better because it'll I agree. be knocked out. But I think I can manage and hold because I'd rather have you have some spells left in case. So that's so you want me to do it to you? I mean, if, if you need to, uh, if we if we need to focus on the circle breakers first. Let's get them in. Let's, let's get, get them the, in and get them situated. Let's, yes, yeah. There are five of them, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Is is like two per casting, or is it like... It's a, a willing creature, so it's one. Oh, you have to cast it five times. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. But I can, if we have 30 minutes, I can ritually cast it three times, so it'll be two spell slots. So, I'm okay. Okay. But are you going to have time to do that and still get in the box? 
Yeah, you just hop in the box. How long, how long does it take to cast that ritual? Ten. Ten minutes. Ten minutes? Yeah. And you have thirty. Yeah, so three people... We're doing five... Five of them. Mm-hmm. Five. I do everybody. Doing all our circle breakers plus Sarek. What? Well, if you need to... Whoever else needs to have it done before me is fine. I'm a, well, I'm asking, do you want it or not? Oh. I'm going in without it. I'm just going to use deception to... Same here. I'm going to hold the nerve. I'm going to go in without it. I don't know it. how I can persuade them, but... I'm, I'm going to go in without it just because I, it, if something goes bad, I want to be aware and awake to okay. do something I'll about it. i just do it to the to five, the five of, them. of them. Yeah, that's yeah. what I'm thinking. So I'll do three ritual casts and then two spell slots for the other. <clears throat> It's like within. They're coming in about thirty minutes. Is that what you said? Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. So what are you casting exactly? Feign death. Okay. Okay. Cool. So that, for all observances, they are dead. Yeah. If anyone opens the casket and sees them. Yep. 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 But just on the. It's a circle. third level spell. Okay. Uh. <clears throat> I'm worried you're going to break their nerve if someone starts coming down here checking boxes. Yeah. Okay. So, as they gather around and you begin performing your rituals, the captain just kind of stands to the side silently with kind of an eyebrow a little bit raised as he watches this, this happen. Um, as you perform uh, this this spell on, on each of them, uh, and you hear a call from the top of the stairs that the ship is is almost there. You're using two spell slots to finish on the other two? Yes. Mm-hmm. Are you ready then? Yep. Yes. Yep. Quickly then. And he, he goes over to the coffin nearest to him. And you see him kind of feel on the side, like at the foot of the coffin. And then, then he like like takes the side of his fist and pounds the side of it and you see the side of the coffin flips down and the inside it looks empty and he crawl he has you uh crawl in whoever wants to so that's a charisma <laughs> check <laughs> for deception i'm in i, I climbed in i'm in I'm so no, uh, mm-hmm. yep. what's interesting is that this is one of the coffins you inspected which one is it? Is it horse guy? <laughs> uh, Head smashed in guy? Yes. Okay. Yeah, this would have been the crushed in chest one. Okay. Great. Right. <laughs> it's empty. Oh, wait, what? He's <laughs> got a trick. He, 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 he like hits the side of his, sits the side of his, of his fist. The, the front flips down. Like, not the lid. Oh, okay. Like the, the front flips down and there's nothing inside. Okay, he's got tricks. And I, and I wiggle in there. <laughs> All right. I'm going to... Rest in peace. Pitch <laughs> 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 black. I'm just making sure that they... <laughs> Fain death is not concentration. So I'm going to, for me and Sarek, cast Enhance Ability. For our charisma checks. Okay. Uh, okay. Does that last for like an hour? Or how long uh, yes, it, it does. Okay. Oh, nice. Sweet. Okay. So he takes you all around to individual coffins, doing the same little, little thing, feeling for a certain spot, hitting it, and then the, fl- the, the, the front flips forward, and he has you climb into empty coffins. Coffins that were not empty when you checked them before. And... Shuts you each in to pitch black. And so now, once again, you find yourself shut into a very tight, pitch black, dark space. That's why I need the advantage. <laughs> yeah. I'm like tucked yeah. in, like knives are like at, like under my chin, like ready if anyone opens the door that it's an I don't want. I'm just like. <laughs> Taken. You hear, eventually you hear his footsteps creak up the stairs as he makes his way back above deck. Mm-hmm. 
And you hear, you feel, this whole time you've been feeling the, the ship uh, slowing. Uh, and eventually you, you kind of hear the distance grating sound as the anchor is dropped. And you feel the bit lurch to a stop. You just, eventually you can kind of hear the muffled sounds of boots on the deck and growing in number. And you wait for a time. And here in this kind of cramped, kind of growing increasingly uncomfortably warm, uh, pitch black coffin that you are uh, locked into. Mm -hmm. You know, it's claustrophobic. It is nerve wracking to wonder what's happening. You have no idea what's happening upside. Every minute feels like an hour. And then you hear the sound of boots, heavy boots, um, like thumping down the stairs. And you, you hear a number of them with some muffled voices that you can't really tell what they're saying. Uh, just kind of walking in and around your coffins. I would like all of you to roll a stealth check for me. Should should cast should cast it. Yeah, I should cast should it. Cast cast it. Yep. Yeah, it's gonna be, you can't really do it now. You're, you're, no. You don't really have enough room to go. No. Okay. Uh, 12 for me. 28 for me. 29 for me. <laughs> I don't want to say it. That's <laughs> <laughs> <Metro> one. <laughs> Really? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Shit. Mm -hmm. Shit. <laughs> so, 12. What'd you get? So 12. Sorry. 28, 29, 12, and 1. <laughs> Wait. Yeah, 1. Yeah. Could use a nat 20, though. Talk to them. Hmm? Could use a nat 20, though. Listen, I'm doing the best I can. <laughs> We're Just trying saying. to carry the stealth over here, guys. I know. I know. <laughs> So, as you guys are hearing these footsteps around you and these voices talking, uh, and you, you hear kind of a muffled, what sounds like the captain's kind of low drone, low droning voice occasionally. So Noah, you, like, in the moment, like, are trying to control everything inside at the moment of being in this situation but you can't help but like do like a look like just basically like this quick intake of breath like at, at one moment and you, you hear the boots stop and you hear a voice like say something and you hear that like what you think is the captain's reply and then you hear, you feel a slight movement on your coffin. I'm, I'm going to cast hear, Plain Death on myself. Uh, Check this full stop. It's... Oh, is it for 11 and later? 11 and later. Is it? Oh, no, I'm not going to. <laughs> I'm not going to do that. <laughs> you feel a slight movement of someone putting their hand on your coffin. Mm -hmm. And then you hear a of what sounds like a, a lid being opened, but you still just feel you just see pitch black. You hear muffled voices again. You actually feel a little bit more movement on your coffin, as if somebody is doing something with it. And then the creak again as you hear the, the like kind of click of the lid being closed again. And then more, more kind of walking around, more voices. And eventually you start to hear less of them. And eventually you start to hear them fade away as more footsteps go upstairs above deck again. And again, the, the area around you falls quiet. Well, 
open and you wait. Yeah, I'm gonna wait till someone comes and get me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Silence and darkness. For a ways, what seems like forever, you continue to wait. No sound, no word, just the gentle movement of the ship. And you can't help but think, are they setting a trap? Are they gone? Are they taking the crew in and then going to come back here? What is happening above deck? Are they making a deal to, to turn you in? There are a million thoughts that go through your head. And after you are all sort of sweaty from this kind of hot <laughs> environment, your, your legs cramped, you're just... The claustrophobia, you know, uh, getting worse, and just the unpleasant feeling of, you know, being in a coffin <laughs> in the dark. You hear another set of footsteps make their way down the stairs. Uh, and Noah, you feel uh, another slight movement on your coffin. And then a, <clears throat> and as the, and the lid or the, the, uh, the front of the coffin flips open again, where you see the form of Captain Othrian. Othrian. Did you enjoy your rest? No, please move, and I'll get out really quickly. <clears throat> he steps aside. I'm gonna Quite effective, isn't it? I don't respond to mm -hmm. him. I'll just go and open everybody's coffins. All right. You go and try, but find it's difficult because you don't know what the, the trick is, but he eventually follows you and goes and, and, and opens, flips open each one. You can see some very nervous, like, circle breakers who did, also did not like that experience at all. Get out and just kind of breathe and take a second. That is... And a very impressive coffin situation you have built here. Mm -hmm. Isn't it? It's very... It's... The design is quite ingenious. Quite. And he, like... He actually goes as you're... Like, as you're in that... Like, standing beside yours, he, like, flips the front of it closed again. And then lifts the lid. And inside is a corpse. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for the bed, mate. <sighs> you okay? I'm sorry, I almost screwed it all up. We'll do better next time. But you didn't screw. Okay. <clears throat> I'm gonna check in on the rest of the circle breakers and make sure that they're okay and feeling okay after coming up from the spell. I think I fell asleep in there for a little while, but I can't really be sure because it was all pitch black, and so I don't know if my eyes were open or closed. And like, you didn't like see stuff in the darkness, did you? You know, mm. like when you stare in the dark for a long time, sometimes you see like shapes. Just me, just, just me. Okay, mm. fine. I understand. <laughs> <laughs> Must be another one of those fey things. Ah, uh, yeah, I don't you know. know. I thought everybody saw that stuff. <laughs> okay. No, I, don't, I didn't fall asleep. That was way too uncomfortable. No. I was poised and ready for the entire time to stab anybody who opened that door that wasn't supposed to. I have no doubt. 
And you could like. I would just slowly open your hand. And you could see like oh, permanent yeah. like indents in my palms. <laughs> and I just like literally was like just gripping my knives for however long. And like just like my nail dents are like in my palms. Very wow. uncharacteristically, Stoic is gonna like <laughs> rub your hand a little bit. Ah, uh, <clears throat> thank you. Yeah, I have to heal the old-fashioned way now. Slightly less <laughs> sexy healing hands these days. <laughs> Normal sexy healing hands. So, Captain, how long till we hit port? About a day. Okay, we're still out of the ways. We should, we should arrive mid morning tomorrow. We should probably let. If them. all goes well. I'm sure it will. Um, we're going to be keeping close contact with our. Contact. Yeah, we'll we'll find they'll they're gonna meet you in the port to get bodies. So we'll make contact and let them know that we're arriving tomorrow morning. How long will you be in port before you leave? Because um, and I'll just like start going over the details of like getting the uh, circle breakers because like we're gonna get them situated into this pass off. But we actually want them to eventually get back on, to a back, or get get on a ship, back to port, like back to Al Raqqa. Probably the same ship. Mm -hmm. Ideally the same ship because yeah. we need to be able to start doing this, a full circle pass. Yep. So then I'll coordinate with them to figure out the the return voyage and all that. I'm happy to arrange for further business. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, the four of us will not be part of that return visit. At least not for the immediate future. Let this go around. Mm. Perhaps <clears throat> we shall see each other in the future. A shame. But perhaps if we all survive that long. Well, if you continue to help take down the, uh, the crown from this side of things, we'll be on in the inside working our our end of things. We'll meet in the middle. When the pillars have fallen. Perhaps so. We can laugh together in the rubble. He just inclines his head. He goes back, stalking after his duties. Perfect. And I will also coordinate the final part of the sale since the final part of this was the rest of the payments on arrival. Okay. So I'll do all that stuff. Sure. So, as you make your arrangements and, and communications and, and pass the, through the last night on the ship, um, you see land as you start to crawl, start to crawl by on the right of the ship. Uh, as it starts making its way kind of slowly closer to and up the coast. Um, <clears throat> And you eventually come into the very distant view of, of the, the town of Last Fort. And, uh, yeah, as you're kind of looking out or just hanging out on, on deck as you approach um, Stoic uh, to Zeke, kind of falls in beside you. Yes. And he says, uh, I, um, I've been thinking about what you said, about my options. The problem is, um, I don't think one such as I would survive very long in a, a place such as Lirendo. But I also think if I go back to my home country, it will... I would... <laughs> The arch priests of these these devils, they are not um, they have much resources. And they do not like to be slighted. I will be proud. So I have spoken with them and I think I might stay on as one of the crew here. I think that 
sounds amazing. Um, does it make you happy? I think they are, and I think I would like to know what makes them so. I completely understand. Well, I hope you also won't mind, since you're going to be a member of this crew, and our fellow companions are going to be using you guys for escort, I hope you'll keep a good eye on, on the work we're doing for us. I will try. But thank you for um, for your words, for your care. Absolutely. Every person deserves to be free and make their own decisions. I hope that is true. <sighs> Good. That's done. I feel better about leaving the ship knowing that you have plans. And if, although I am um, staying here and learning about what they are all about, um, I don't know much about him. And he points to your, your focus that has the symbol children in kind of Arcturian's flavor. Yeah. Um, but I don't know much about the God of Life, but it seems like you're a good representative of him. You save I. So thank you. You're welcome. Just nods and then goes back uh, over where see him kind of start talking to some of the crew and they, a couple of them kind of give him a slap on the back with kind of smiles and I just kind of stare at my focus for a little while and uh, take a couple minutes before returning back to the rest of the crew I do want to find the captain as you, oh, sorry. as you do as you do like you know if you reach up and just kind of run your fingers over it. Yeah. And it's warm. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> do, uh, I do want to find the captain real fast. Um, okay. Yeah, he's, uh, he's up talking with, uh, he's at the helm again talking with uh, Arnold. Uh, Captain, I, I do have a quick question for you, and I apologize if it is um, an assumption on uh, those who are seafaring folk. Um, do you happen to know a very good tattooist? Hmm. We're gonna try and get some. I am <laughs> certain one can be found in Vastport. Most sailor-friendly towns have them. Those that are with us, if any of them need um, a tattoo to uh, secure a little bit of safety for themselves, is there someone who can do it without announcing that these kids have um, been tattooed under false pretenses? If you understand my meaning. I understand that such individuals are typically silenced with gold. Please make sure if any of them want it, that they can get access to it before they leave port. Right. Thank you. And I'll hand him enough gold for every single one of them to get a tattoo. Okay. How much are you giving? How much do they? How much do they? Need? I thought all the circle breakers already had the circle break tattoo. Yeah, the four circle breakers do. Tzik 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 yeah. Oh, Tzik's then I'll then I'll pay for Tzik's. Yeah, Tzik's the only Since he's gonna be. Yeah. You think even with a bribe, probably ten gold. Okay. Not that. 
Not that expensive for a simple tattoo. Then I'll make sure that he that he gets tattooed. Ten gold okay. for a life is pretty damn cheap. Um, and I'm gonna put a little bit extra if he wants to get anything else added or wants to do anything more for that other than just the conclusion of his tattoo. He's gonna need some black robes <laughs> to work on this crew. <laughs> just, yeah, I, I give him I give him a little bit extra to kind of pay for his beginnings. Okay. okay. Great. So, you guys make your way in uh, to the, the town of Last Fort once more as the, as the ship makes its way in and, and eventually moors itself uh, into the harbor. And um, you make arrangements to unload the coffins into wagons and, and just, you know, take some time, but eventually you make your way in. Um, you know, v working with Adris, you're able to uh, figure out where to go uh, to make contact. Um, you know, and as you, uh, you basically are told to walk a circle around a particular warehouse in Lastport, and so you, whoever would like to, uh, could go do that. I'll do it. To go walk a circle. Mm -hmm. Yep. The two of you. I, I'm going to go walk a circle. I'll do it, yeah. Okay, then, yeah, then Sarah and I will. Sarah and Sarah will. Yeah. Okay. So as you as you enter Last Port and start walking in, you still see there's, um, you know, as it's been steadily growing colder as you travel north, um, you can see this far north, it's still cold. Um, though you are seeing some some dripping as it, as apparently you are seeing a little bit of snow melt start to happen, um, which is also kind of contributing to some mud uh, appearing in a greater amount. Um, you know, in, in town here, as, as the snow is slowly starting to drip into the dirt dirt roads throughout the, the town, uh, but it'll take quite a while to melt through this much snow as far north as, as Garen and, and Last Border is. But you make your way into the, the kind of small little warehouse area of Last Port and find your find the, the correct warehouse and begin walking around it, making a full circle. And after about halfway through another uh, round, uh, another individual falls in step with you. And you can kind of you see a uh, kind of uh, wide-shouldered, um, you know, probably only about six foot, but, um, you know, just kind of wide-shouldered and look, you know, seems kind of stocky or muscular. Um, you know, in dark clothing under under a, a cloak with a, a hood pulled up and you can see he, under the hood is, um, you know, kind of strong, not ugly, but not attractive face either, um, with a little bit of a flat nose and, and a kind of a greenish tint to his skin. Um, and he... Uh, <clears throat> falls in with you and then gives gives you a curt nod and then makes a gesture with his with his head for you to follow him. Alright. He leads you if you follow, he leads you uh, off of that path, kind of steals into um, a little alleyway that branches into another one into like a little bit of a dead end where he stops and turns and he says greetings. Hello. Greetings. I'm Ohm. I'm your contact. The wagons you unloaded, are those the supplies? Can I get a, a sense if he's a, a good in? Sure. Good insight, Paycheck. Oh, I'm not good at insight. Are you insightful? 
maybe about the same as you are. Put on your mask. I'm going to a little bit better. Yeah, but I don't want to show if he's a baddie. Can I? Can I use? Can I use you as, as yeah, help? I'll help out with that. Because it's it is a little little weird. Just make sure. Okay. It's okay. Weird. Um. Mm. Uh. Seventeen. Seventeen. Yeah. Okay. Um. He seems like he's alert and looking around and um. You know. Uh. Obviously not carefree <laughs> in any way, but it doesn't seem to be deceiving you. Okay. Uh, yes. Yeah. All right. I'll get word to the others. We, uh, we need to move fast. And we need to move faster than you think. We'll, we'll put this in a secure location, and then I need you. For okay. what? I've gotten word, well, I got word, or rather, overheard. The crown is, <clears throat> the crown has some sort of valuable shipment leaving last port. They, uh, are guarded, and by the amount of guard, there's, it must be very valuable. We need to hit it before it reaches further into Garrett and get more reinforcements. Does uh, our superiors know? I've sent word it'll take time to reach them. We could probably reach them faster. All right. All right, well, let's get shipment and then we will make contact with him. Yeah, we got everything secure. With a quickness. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. So we start working okay, on that. Sir, sir, can I do a nature check for me? Okay, nature. Uh, hey, 24. Well, actually, uh, sir, I can as well. But. He got better than me. Um. Uh, oh, no, I got 17. Okay, not a Sarah, but Sarah, because of your proximity to uh, where Blood Pool is, um, you've heard of them, but you've never actually seen one. But um, you're pretty sure this is an Earth Genasi. Okay. Huh. Um, you've heard of them in, in the neighboring country of Gaius, but never actually seen one. Um, Interesting. But anyway, he, he moves quickly. Like he is, you know, you're kind of having to speed up pace to, to keep up with him. It's, uh, he seems very intent on moving fast. And he explains along the way that they overheard some soldiers talking over drinks and, um, and uh, overheard of a old statue um, that of an old statue, like forgotten, that's that they'll pass by, and so he knows the road, and he's also pretty sure he knows how to cut them off. And, and they don't, you haven't heard a whole lot about what the actual shipment might be no rumors or hearsay or anything? No, but supposedly they have a war mage with them. Well, that'd be fine. Anything, of war, and you know, war mage is serious. Yeah. Um, so you know anything, any, anything deserving a war mage is something they want to protect. Yes. So anything that has a war mage, I want to take from them. Um, it's, as we're making our way back and this conversation is happening, my hand's already on my tattoo while this conversation is happening. And literally, mm -hmm. like, in, like, as the conversation is going on, like, I am passing that knowledge to the two of them. And saying, like, we'll definitely want to make sure that we get this information to leadership quickly. With hearing her say that, I'm going to instantly start writing Adris. Um, did you get the guy's name? Well, the guy, the, our contact guy? Oh, no. Yeah. 
But you relayed that to me. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm getting it. I just basically am passing you exactly what she's saying. Uh, so I will write to Adrius. Adrius, we've made port and met up with Ulm. He's wanting us to help raid a shipment of the people. I just want to verify that he has the authority to do that. Uh, after a moment, uh, Adris writes back, um, well, first of all, excellent work. That is incredible news. You have no, no idea how good a news that is that you've arrived and that the ship that is here. The safe house in last port has uh, suffered a bit after the crackdown around the coastal areas. So if Homer is asking for help, he needs it, and he's uh, he's in charge there now. So if he's if he believes it's important, I would appreciate if you'd help him. Good to know. Um, once we help him with this, we'd like to make it back to camp as soon as possible. Of course. Get it done. And I'll just hit the tattoo. Adrian says Olm's okay. We should help him out. Okay. And then as he's, like, almost finishing up that whole, like, thing about all the things I go, uh, we've got confirmation. They've been notified. <laughs> all right. So, he, um, he oversees, you know, not saying anything, but clearly just the body language of impatience, you know, just kind of antsy, wanting to get going. Um... And you see a few other individuals uh, involved in different parts of the process as they kind of take over as drivers of the wagon. Um, and at this point is where you would uh, say goodbye to the circle breakers as they won't be following further inland. Yeah. Um, I'll give my farewells to everyone. Uh, give an extra little squeeze to, to breathe you just to be like, you've got this. You're in charge now of all these ruffians. I'll do my best. Good job. Thank you for everything. Of course. Um, and as I'm like saying goodbye to everyone, I'll give an extra hug to um, uh, our Eric Coker friend. <laughs> and just like, thank you again for exactly. all your help. Mm -hmm. Especially with that uh, wind conversation. Of course. So, I hope that you are successful in your endeavors here. You as well. Thank you. And when I get to um, Zeke, uh, I want to sh just like shake his hand and then turn his hand for where the tattoo is. <laughs> and, I, and I'm just going to pat it and just say, the debt has been paid. Whenever you want, the ink is yours. It takes a moment, just kind of locks eyes to, with you and you just kind of get this silent impression of like he understands what that means mm -hmm. like a weighty kind of gaze and then he just slowly nods with like this silent appreciation best of luck on your journeys you as well I'll just skedow bye sister goodbye brother So, you guys uh, hurry off with Olm, who uh, also is able to provide some, some horses to try to uh, move a little bit quicker, and then basically sets off at a gallop out of Lastport with you guys following through with splashes of mud and slushy snow, mm -hmm. and that's where we're going to take a break. <laughs> And you just hear Stoa going, Hey, what's your name? Horse <laughs> 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 friends are back. Full, full speed. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Anthony. <laughs> Sprinkles. <laughs> Sparkle 
seems to be confident knows where he's going um but you guys make good time the five of you uh make it your way through um what seems what seems to be kind of back roads of garen if you will mm-hmm. um not very populated occasionally seeing farmhouses or cottages or things of that nature um but definitely not as wide or well kept roads uh but a little more than wagon trails for the most part um you know, and eventually uh, he uh, signals for you to slow down uh, and stop. And he says, we dismount here, tie the horses up. All right. <clears throat> Follow me. He leads you. Start loosening it up. Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> As Jesse starts leading you into the forest, uh, yeah, you hear him say, you have your masks? Yes. Yep. All right. Uh, and he just continues, and then you eventually see him kind of slow a little bit and start moving a little more stealthily, um, you know, a little more aware. And eventually you reach a point where you can kind of see into a clearing where there seems to be a bit of a crossroads, like a three-way crossroads of sorts of these of, a, of these roads. Um, and he said we should have we should have made it here before them. So just be ready. Uh, and on the sound of a he makes a sort of bird call whistle. Uh, quickly and it's kind of creepy how accurate it is like uh, that's very very skilled i can't do it but (laughs) um, he says if you hear if you hear that that's the signal understood got it masks masks on absolutely um and i'm gonna look to Sarek and i'm gonna say uh let's be extra quiet absolutely reading my thoughts um we don't have a good idea how far out this shipment might potentially be, do we? Does Ohm kind of have an idea? He thinks it'll probably be, I mean, potentially any minute now. Okay, good. I, I'll go ahead and, I'm going to go ahead and cast Pass Without Trace on us. Okay. Okay. Let me give me a second. Sure. Um, so see the map, see where we want to be. Yeah, yep. that's what I'm trying to pull up here. Just give me a second. Okay, so Okay, so your tokens are on there, but like uh this is this is the crossroads. Uh you would know that the the wagon is basically coming from left to right. So, where would you guys like to be? Uh, sorry, I'll have it up in just a second. I'll take a high spot um, up there for Stoic. Back behind that bush. Okay. I want so the big ones, the big ones are trees. So you can basically kind of hide behind the 
trunk, if you will. Yeah. The smaller ones are bushes, but the, the big ones are trees. Okay. Um, I want a good uh, uh, hiding place with a line of sight, and I'm specifically going to be looking out for the um, the mage. The war mage. You got range? Okay. Do you want to get up on that little cliff? Okay. So where would you like to be? Um... The, the problem is that the, they'll see me on the cliff, right? They'll see me just hanging out on that cliff. On those little, like, um, step-ups. You could try to hide behind the bush. Uh, That's yeah. our position. What did he say? They're coming from left to right, so they're coming from this way. Okay, looking from this way to come this way. Um, yeah, I, actually, I would like a little bit of height. If I can get, like, behind uh, a bush or something where, like, I am not visible oh. from the road, but I can get good height and like sightline on what's coming towards us. Yeah, remember, you guys have to be within like 30 feet of me. Oh, that's right. We do need to be within 30 feet. Yeah, you guys have to be within 30 feet. Where do you, you want to go? You can pass a, um, a hind. <laughs> I can pass a hind. Yeah, yeah let me can. stay with you. Yeah. yeah. Okay. How tall are... The mast's pretty big. It's yeah. pretty small, so... It is pretty small. How tall How tall are those bushes? Right there at the corner of the... At the yeah. Door. Right there at the corner, you probably have to be prone to okay. hide in them. Gotcha. Um, you're probably fine That's then. Where I was planning to yes, where you want to be, because I'm going to try to keep you and Stoic yeah. within range. Yeah, and I'm going to specifically take some of the snow that's available and I want to do the eat the snow thing so that my breath is yeah. not visible and do all the things that we've learned over time how to like blend even more. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I'll pop uh, right about here because that'll that'll get it'll give yeah, you. So if if you two both hide behind that one tree mm -hmm. and get all three of this. Yep. Okay. Wait, are you crouching behind the bush? Yeah, that one. Okay. Because that that'll give uh, you guys thirty. Uh, it'll be within thirty feet. And then you said you want. I'll be behind the tree. So now where do you want to be? Behind the tree across the road from Stoic, so, so next where Sarek is, yeah. Okay, so like there. Um maybe a little more to the right. On the map, like moving to the right. Right there. Okay. Yep. There? Yeah, that's good. Just yeah, I don't want to be Visible. I'm not trying to be visible. Okay, give me one second, because I realize I forgot home on the tokens here. It's pretty lighter guy. <laughs> forgot my personality. His name is Om. Close enough. Mm -hmm. He's really into meditating. Mm -hmm. Oh. I was thinking Om's like he's got an electric personality. I mean, the, the carpenter coming out of me. Mm -hmm. okay. Any place you would like him to be? Within the 30 feet range? Somewhere he's not going to die. <laughs> Where he can get the pass without a trace? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's maybe been, on the other side of the tree. Over here. Yeah, it's going right. be. Okay. Yep. Okay. First of all, everybody make a stealth check. Mm-hmm. 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 Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. That's not without your plus ten. So <laughs> I don't get your plus ten. Nope. My plus ten. Yeah. <laughs> How's that armor working for you? It's a little creaky. Aye, aye, aye. Natural one. 
<laughs> but that's an 11. <laughs> okay. How many rolls? Natural roll two. <laughs> that's above yeah. still. I know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm rolled a two, so. <laughs> Plus ten. Plus ten. Yeah. Uh, so, stoic was yours? Uh, seventeen. Uh, Sarah? 29. And Asura? 27. <laughs> okay. Without the plus 10. <laughs> Just my natural plus 11. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. So, before long, as you guys get into place, you hear the distant sound of hooves, and eventually followed by the grating sound of, of wheels on the and eventually you see coming around the corner um, a very large wagon. Um, it is uh, uh, pulled by two kind of muscular larger horses. Uh, and this, this wagon is very large. It's like easily 10 by 15. Um, you know, quite large and armored. Like, looks like it is fully armored and completely closed. No windows, no nothing um, that you can see from your vantage point. Uh, but it looks very, uh, very, very well protected. Um, as you as you guys watch and approach, you see. Uh, <clears throat> uh, a, a, a driver in the front uh, holding the reins as it as it makes its way kind of slowly down the road and then you see behind it you see two uh, uh, two of the people's uh, soldiers in very well made armor like very well armored um following behind it uh you know eyes alert and watchful Zenoa and asura with your passive perception you also hear kind of a distant muffled thudding of some sort and as you um you know, as you watch, staying low, keeping keeping behind the bushes, trying to keep it between you and any kind of sight. Um, you know, as it passes by fairly close to you guys, this wagon, uh, you start to see that the driver um, doesn't seem to be just a normal driver, but is also wearing black robes that at least uh, some of you will have seen before uh, in your the time you fought with Adris and Drail um, that looks like the same kind of uniform robes of a war mage excellent mm -hmm. you see this as they're passing by and you kind of hear that steady that steady thudding sound like kind of muffled um, somewhere nearby um, around you suddenly you suddenly see the driver pull up the horses suddenly and say ready there's magic here as he as everyone suddenly starts looking around and you see weapons drawn uh, as there's a sudden alertness I want you guys to all roll initiative. Claire, if you'll switch to combat music as well. Oh, yeah, sorry. That actually already had it on there. Oh, okay. Yeah, we're good. Um, good. Plus you're like 30. Plus, my plus eight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my anxiety roll. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> I've, long, I've long considered <laughs> initiative anxiety. Mm -hmm. And Gray made a herring gun, like a rabbit uh -huh. character. He made it have a plus 17 to his initiative. Jeez, Louis, I mean, that makes sense. <laughs> like, that makes sense. Like, how is that possible? <sighs> How is that possible? Alert plus like oh, it's like the bunniness of yeah. him plus okay. whatever class he took. Yeah, he like took all of. So he, he the, made the serif, but with just initiative. He's like a spastic rabbit, mm -hmm. like twitchy. <laughs> I mean, same. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. What are you hire? Twenty-seven. Not Sarek? No. Fifteen Hunter? Fifteen for Sarek. Okay. Ten Hunter? Fourteen. And so what'd you get? There are two Three. sides to this table. <laughs> <laughs> Drop all those beautiful tokens onto the map. Wait. See what disaster we're in for. Working on it. Sounds like an hit hard on my first hit. Yes. He did call, he did like uh, conjure some ter terrifying creature. Yeah, I still yeah, play, Zenova was off with Talon at the yeah, time. Yeah, okay. And I was still playing with Valen at the time. Yeah, this is, yeah, this is when you guys were with, uh, when Adris and, and Drayon took you to assault the, basically, slave wagon. Oh, uh, yeah. All right, so. They do seem aware that something is wrong, so there's not a surprise round. Um, they aware that they're aware of a threat here, okay. so. Uh, Asura, you were up first. I let her rip! On? What? On the War Mage. Okay. Do you like that? Um, and that is going to be a. Do you have my favorite one? Um, it's a peacock. 26 to hit. Twenty-six hits. Okay. Well, actually, yeah, more of these. Yeah. I did forget to narrate very quickly that as he says that and made the alert, you did see see him make a quick gesture and like there's like this this shimmer sort of went across the radar. Yeah. Um, of some sort. Um, so go ahead. What'd you get hit? Uh, you you hit. So what was your? She's doing math. Thirty damage. Nice. Okay. All right. So as your as your bolt uh, or as your arrow uh, shoots into him, you see him like like kind of uh, throw his shoulder to the side as he grimaces in pain. You see a spray of blood, but it's almost like the arrow is partially deflected. Uh, and you know, kind of careens off. It definitely damaged him really well, but it's but it, he seems somehow protected a little bit as well. And as soon as I let it off, I go stealth mode, and I uh, and I use my movement to get lower and further down, so that I'm I have more coverage from these lower bushes and the kind of like outcropping of the lower step. North or south? Uh, down, south. Okay, so like down here. Yeah, I basically like stealth mode and then like get myself lower. All right, roll stealth check. Um, that is going to be a twenty-three. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, no problem. Okay, 23. Good to know. All right, so next up is actually their turn. <laughs> I think that's... Are we taking bets? Hmm? I said, are we taking bets? You think there's a monster in it? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> see him uh, thrust his hand out and a very familiar red ball of light shoots out toward the bushes where you shot from uh, which is still going to hit you as you see uh, that familiar like explosion of fire Mm -hmm. of a fireball uh, in that area but slightly larger than the ones you've seen easy typically do that gives me half of a half damage because I am fire resistant as a tea flame. Right. Yep. So it's like quarter damage. What was to get hit by that? Yeah, I get half damage for evasion uh-huh. because I failed. And then, and then half again because of the fire resistance. Yep, because you're a tea flame. I don't know where you are. Nuke the area. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. Yeah, uh, so, which is hopefully good. <laughs> All right. <laughs> you got to do this one digital, Doug? You got enough dice with you? <laughs> uh, actually, you'd have to do it all because I didn't bring my dice oh. with me. I forgot. How dare you not uh, keep dice on you at all times? You never know what's my case game of D&D. I think about it. I might still have a set in my backpack now. <laughs> um, I'm going to be able to go check in a second. Uh, but... Yeah. Uh, yeah, so you take 10 points of damage after all that. <laughs> 40. Wow. <laughs> and that only just now burns through the morning hit points that you give us. Because <laughs> I would have been dead very quickly if that hit me at full strength. Uh huh. Okay. That would have been a one hit for me. Okay, okay, okay. Just like breathing heavy behind this bush. It's on fire now. <laughs> Just a blaze around you. The other two, the, the two soldiers there on the back. Um, you know, fairly quickly, you know, set themselves into position, uh, readying themselves for anything that should threaten them. Um, so they're going to hold an action, each of them. 
And then you hear a quickening of like, as as that thudding you were hearing suddenly gets louder and quicker. Zanoa, who had the natural one himself, unfortunately, um, you, with your, you, you look behind you just in time to see large imprints in the snow oh, yeah. moving towards you as you suddenly feel a uh, a massive force uh, swinging into you. So uh, that is going to be yeah, 24 to hit. Just misses, right? Mm-hmm. Mage armor. <laughs> <laughs> I wish. So, as as Is this it? happens, as it attacks, you you see shimmering into being a large, what looks like a giant, except um, wearing with this sort of orange yellow skin, wearing a loincloth to spike the snow with four arms mm-hmm. as it as you take the brunt of one of the fists uh i'm sorry say that again as you take uh uh eight i'm oh, sorry hold on yeah eight bludgeoning damage okay. as it gets ready to attack you with the other three arms So the next attack is a 20 to hit. Yep. So that's going to be 11 bludgeoning damage. Next is a 25 to hit. Jesus. Uh Which is going to be 13 bludgeoning damage. And then the last one uh, is a 21 to hit. So that's going to be 12 bludgeoning damage. I don't like it. As he, this giant creature, easily 20 foot tall, just pounds into you with four fists with this like, like this deep guttural roar, um, just pounding Zanoa into the ground here, um, shivering into <coughs> visibility. Uh, so that will be their turn, Sarek. So you, this, you said this thing is now visible? Yes. It's not on the map yet. Oh, it's not on the map? Uh, hold on. Nope. Move <laughs> on in. Come on. Come on. My blood is visibly on the map. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's fine. Hey, cutie. <laughs> um, all right. Well. His cats are amazing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sir, as you turn and see Zanoah getting pounded into the snow, you turn and see this massive four, four-armed creature with these muscular arms and this large belly. And on the belly, you actually see a set of symbol- symbols similar to that which you've seen on other weird creatures throughout Larendel. Do that, I know? you know, seem to show that are under control of the, the crown people somehow. And do I know enough to know that if we take out the crown people that they will go about their merry way and leave us alone? Or... Um, Often not, because they are often very, very unhappy at their circumstances. So. Yep, that's what I was kind of curious about. Okay. Well, I don't know if this is going to work, because he looks beefy. He looks like he's probably strong, but Zanoa's right there, and I need her to try to get away. Uh, I'm going to do Blood try. Curse of the Binding on him. Uh, I'm going okay. to go ahead and amplify that, which I think I have to take. 
it's not bonus action. Um, do I have to roll to take damage for that? I think I do. I'm just going to do it. Well, before you, as you, whatever you're about to do, as you start doing it, uh, you're going to become visible so uh, that the other two soldiers are going to use their held actions to throw spears at you. Okay, cool. So let me, let me resolve that real quick. Just throw spears at you. I've got a little extra protection because I'm like three quarters cover, at least for one of them. Yeah, they basically reach, well, javelins, I guess, technically, but they reach behind you and chuck, uh, uh, two javelins each as their attack action. Jesus. Okay. So many javelins. Yeah, you're but seeing, these are, these are not your average rabble, as you quickly see. Yeah. These are very trained soldiers. <laughs> it's more like who just casually carries javelins <laughs> around. <laughs> You, you, okay, okay, first, right? first is an 18 to hit. Oof. Yeah, that hits. Okay. Okay. So, seven piercing. Right. First one. Next one's going to hit uh, for five piercing. Okay. Next one's not going to hit. And then the fourth one is 13, so that's not going to hit either. And uh, the one that's on the far end uh, from me, uh, kind of close to the other side of the road, I'm going to go ahead and reaction uh, Hellish Rebuke on that that dude. The, the northernmost one? Yep. Okay. Because I Do feel it. like I can see him the best. Okay. Do um, it. No, where is it? Hellish Rebuke. Hellish Rebuke. So they... Have to make a dex 15, he has to make a dex 15 save. Dex 15, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. 16. Okay, so that means half damage, I think, right? Yeah, well, so half damage. Uh, okay. That's gonna be 16, so 8 fire damage. Okay. So you see him uh, definitely maneuver quickly out of the way, avoiding some of the brunt of the damage, uh, but still taking a bit. And you see it damages him, uh, but you see you see it damages him, but you see very little reaction as he just seems trained. Mm -hmm. You know, he just he has business. That makes sense. Uh, all right. So now we're going to turn back around and do Blood Curse of the Binding on the big forearm dude. <laughs> and that's a strength saving throw of 16. 20. That's what I figured, yeah. I had to do it, I had to try it out. He's pretty strong. Yep. Alright, well. Uh, that's gonna suck. Okay. So I'm just gonna I'm gonna throw uh, put two ta two uh two shots into the big dude. Do both shots. Okay. Uh, twenty-two to hit on the first one. That hits. Uh -huh. uh, eight. Ooh, there we go. Fourteen points of damage. Second one nice. is a twenty-four to hit. Yep. And that one gets nine points of damage. Alright, sinking two shots into him as he is just pounding into Zenoa and you just see him like like shake his arm like you know, like irritated, kind of looking around, uh, seeing you and you just kinda of see him bear like these these kind of large a couple of them missing teeth in a snarl. Super fun. Uh yeah, yeah, I think that's gonna do it. Alright, Zenoa. Did any of your stuff make him like lose a reaction? Is that what you were trying to? I was trying to get him to lose a reaction. But he still has one. Yeah, he okay. still got one. Okay, I want to skirt, skirt around. Skirt, skirt. Yeah, 
that way. I don't want to leave his range. Um, okay. Please no. I have a question. Mm -hmm. When we talk about walls, straight lines, could I potentially, if, I'm, if I made a straight line, could I get all three of these guys? It's a five foot thick, five foot wide spell. Well, let's see. Where? Hang <clears throat> on. Uh... You know what sucks is like, so they added the spell measurements, and I even tried it before you guys got on. Mm -hmm. and it was awesome, and now <coughs> it's not giving me the option to do that. <laughs> Sounds about right. Yep. So. <laughs> that tracks. All right, so, all right, so it's five foot wide, you said. Mm-hmm. And, and how long? Uh, it can be a hundred feet long, but I don't, I don't want, I would stop it before it like got stoic. to stoic, yeah. Just in case it would hit him, it doesn't need to be 100 feet long. Okay. Nice. Oh my gosh. Roll 20. Maybe. Roll 20 and ship it, please. <laughs> it's alright, I thought about throwing some up there too, but I won't. Yeah, I give it to you. <laughs> okay. Great. Um. Okay, so, yeah, she's very bloody and hurt, and she just wants to be done with this fight already. Um, she's going to use her focus, pull out her staff, and kind of, like, sling it in the air, like, to make this line, and she's going to cast Blade Barrier. Okay, okay. So that all all three of those guys would be in the area, the five foot area of it. Yes. Is that about right? The shape you want? Yep. As long as it's not getting stuck. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Then yeah, I'll give it to you. Okay, great. I don't think anything happens until the start of their turn. Uh, okay. for the first time on a turn. Yeah. Um. And let me. I forget how you roll it with bonus actions. Like, if I do a spell, am I allowed to... Oh, I didn't take short of anything, right? You can do a cantrip that's a bonus action. Right, okay. If I don't have that. The... We're good. Okay. Um, I'll just stay there. And it does like obscure your sight. That's why I don't want to get it near you if you wanted to shoot. So it makes it hard for them to see what's going on right now. Um, it obscures. On the, people on the other side of it, so. Like, I won't be able to okay. see. Uh, actually, I think it if would apply on this. Behind on this it, right it's now. like they have cover or something. Catch up. Yeah, it would still apply right now, at least the way we've been playing this whole campaign is when they when you do stuff like this spell when it enters their the walls area for the first time. Uh huh. Oh, on a turn. Yeah. Or starts it. Okay. That is differently worded. Okay. Yeah, so, they enter or start there. On their turn. So on their turn. Yeah. No problem. Ooh, that's nasty. <laughs> so as you see, um, a bunch of whirling blades suddenly Please materialize. Help. Uh, in the air and kind of form this this kind of whirling wall uh, and start uh, slashing into these uh, individuals. Uh, you're staying put though? Yeah, I'm not running. Okay. So that brings us to 
Um, oh, yeah. Who is going to run forward? And he will make an attack, pulling out a sword. It's going to roll really poorly and not hit it. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's useless. <laughs> Seeing how this transpire, seeing that giant beast just melee on everybody. Um, he's going to jump up out of the bushes and he's going to take that giant monster in sight and he's going to cast Mental Prison. <laughs> at the giant? At the giant. <laughs> he needs to make a 16 intelligence save. Okay. Lost myself. How intelligence. dirty is this giant? <laughs> well, we're gonna find out. Yep. Listen, Hopefully you can good. be tall, brawny, and you have a really smart mind. Let's hope he's he's missing that last part though. Look, I know the whole book by cover thing, but I, that's a fail. I'm hoping. Hey, <laughs> buddy, let's go. That's what I needed. Okay. So. You said that the wall that she casts is like swirling blades and stuff? Right. Okay. I want that wall to suddenly surround him and him to see. It? Well, no, I'm not bending it. He it's a mental prison, so he's gonna it's an illusionary. I want him to see those swirling blades all around him in three hundred and sixty degrees. Slashing mm -hmm. at him. And on that field save, he automatically takes 5d10. Oh my god! Yeah. Well, on a successful save, but he didn't he didn't save. Yeah. Yeah, what? on a failed save. On a failed save. He takes 5d10. Oh, yeah, okay, he does, yeah. Go ahead. I'm going to be doing damage with Ben. I'm sorry. Also, all three of them are going to get 6d10 damage. Okay. <laughs> you guys. You guys are your freaking magic, man. So, we should try. Oh, that's a pretty really good roll. <laughs> that's a seven, an eight, and I I used to a ten. ten. That's oh my god! Hold on, I gotta math that. That's a. I'm not the weakest link in this. Fight. Yeah, like seven, we were good. We we were good the first half of the yeah. levels, mm -hmm. and now it's now they're it's yeah. tipping on their side. Yeah, it's insane. Uh huh. Okay, fourteen, fourteen, nineteen, twenty-nine. 29 plus 8 is 37. <laughs> Psychic damage. There's this thing in video games called the light game. Mm -hmm. We're light game. <laughs> <laughs> What's it called? Light game. We're light game. Oh. Like we, yeah, we scale. Mm -hmm. Good gosh. Okay. Mm -hmm. and, and if he reaches, <laughs> and and this, as my roar of pain as, as it I'm just. Momentarily, just kind of like beats his head for a second as, some, as he just seems to be in severe pain. Good. And as my bonus. Just looking around him. As my bonus action, I would like to yell out for Zenoa to run. Move away from him! Okay. Nice. Okay, Asura. I'm hitting the mage again! Do it. To destroy him. Uh, that is going to be a 19 to hit. Yeah, you are hitting, so it's with advantage. Yep. So I okay. Know. The 19 yeah. hits. Yeah. That's good. So again, shooting him, and, and again, he takes takes some really good damage, but like, it seems to like deflect off of that that kind of protection that he has around him. 
And I'm gonna do the same thing again where I'm going to uh, stealth and then move down into this like lower tree, continuing to move kind of like south. Like here? Left, yeah. Okay. Roll stealth check. Um, and that is going to be a 30. Okay. Yes, thank you. Alrighty. Very nice. Sure, <laughs> <laughs> oh no, what's going on here? Take it, take it, take it, take it, take it. Is he dead yet? We can <laughs> <He's> dead, right? <laughs> and he falls down on the ground. <laughs> lifeless. Huzzah. Mm-hmm. We win. <laughs> oh yeah, because oh they all start their round in that yep. yeah. not nastiness. Yeah. Oh, and you yeah. get to roll uh, massive amounts of damage there. How many? At sixty ten. So with tonight's like it'll probably be a solid six damage. <laughs> do you need some d10s? I just have the full one. Um. Do I? Yeah. Okay. Stoic. Yep. Ready. Bring it. Stoic. I need you to. Do a dexterity saving throw for me. Do they need you? 19. Woo! 19 is a fail. Holy crap! Oh. I don't know how many adders, man. That was a straight roll. <laughs> do you get a yeah, roll? It it's, it's the start of their turn. Who's, who's doing what? Somebody's doing the mage. Hey, Hops down. Mage is not in the oh, thing. Mage's getting me. Oh, yeah. Well, Hops, yeah, Hops yeah. down. Uh, out of sight of Asura now, on, of the, on this other wagon, seeing you, you see him turn and make a very quick, very skilled gesture, thrusts his hands out, and you see this massive bolt of lightning arc through you, and you are going to take 28 lightning damage. Ooh. Okay. Have. And I need you to make a <laughs> concentration check. Oh no! Yep. Oh. Do I have advantage on those? No. Is it one mage? Fourteen. That's work range. Fourteen. Because uh, you have to be half, right? So that's damage. That's true. That's true. That's fourteen. Yep, I am double checking here just to make sure the mat, which one gets it here. Yeah, that's right, just the tie please, to that. Please, please let it meet a beat. Meets a beat, Uh huh. Oof. <laughs> I mean, does he have to make a save on the mind prison thing every turn? Or is he just there until. He's just there. He doesn't make any saves. Not for the initial one. 
he just he doesn't after the initial one he just stays there and if he moves he takes damage and so oh, oh, but if, oh, as long as he just holds still mm -hmm. he just holds still and it stays up as long as I maintain please concentration. let it be in the caster's favor because mm -hmm. that would be clutch in that 14 oh <laughs> my stomach mm -hmm. hurts I think you get it yeah yes oh, oh man oh. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't say exactly, but it's typically how it works. I appreciate it. I'll take, I'll take, you I'll take your call. Oh, man. Oh. It's one of my favorites. All right. So, still take the damage. Yep, which I did. Um, and now, it's their turn. Yeah. And, um, it's no witness to wreck them. <clears throat> I have such limited spells, most of my spells are concentration because I'm not going to be like, pow, pow, pow. <laughs> <laughs> not like, um, oh, God, what's, what's this phrase from season one of Taz at the end? Okay, of the so the two guys uh, have started their turn in that thing, so what, what happens to them? They take 60, 10 damage. All right, go ahead and roll it. That's a roll twice, like one for each. Oh, okay. Oh, for, for one for each guy. That's good. Yeah. Um, I mean, for all three of them, right? Or is it not getting the big guy? We haven't got to him yet. Okay. Oh, because it's started their turn. Okay. Okay, so 36. <laughs> 36, okay. Um, uh huh. For whoever. The first one, right? The northmost guy? Okay. And then the next guy. Oh, oh. Okay. Oh, oh my god. Forty. <laughs> oh. How are you okay? Six. Any. Oh, wrong guy. I got 60, two, two tens. Yeah, you got up to sixty. And a nine. Mm -hmm. That's pretty and awesome. <laughs> Forty, holy crap! All right. Okay. And then, oh so God, you see these blades know. slashing into it, the sound of like screeching metal and, and blood splatters is just slicing these guys up. They are taking a lot of damage. <laughs> I'm surprised that person was still standing. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah. He's okay, taking wait. like 50 uh, points. Oh my gosh, I'm just doing this thing. Um, I literally hate everything. Yeah, I had to uh, make for it because. So that being said, uh, he's going to move around here, and he's going to move down here, and actually he's going to move up to attack, well, let's see, he was here, so yeah, he'll move up, up this way, and then around to attack Stoic. Of course. Um, so he... Takes his spear and makes three quick attacks on Whoa. him. Whoa! That's a high level fighter. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Told you these are not the average rebel here. Yep. So. Three is 11. You, yes. Alright. So, first attack is. 19. That hits. So that'll be 11 piercing. Of course it's piercing. Um, they gotta make a concentration check. Uh, 20. Dirty 20. Let's go. Okay. Next hit is 15 hit. That misses. Let's go. The next one, also 15. Also misses. <laughs> I just saved my ass twice. Uh -huh. <laughs> and this guy, let's see, you know what? He was here. No take backs. <laughs> Get away from me. <laughs> no wonder if he's choosing between me and Om. Neither. He's actually going to skirt around just barely out of Ohm's range to get up to Stug wow. again. There's no take backs. <laughs> there it is. 
<laughs> there is a you can see it in their eyes that there is like an awareness like there is a these guys are trained in recognizing magic and recognizing different types of fighting like these are they know what they're doing Uh, all right, so he's going to make three attacks again. Uh, so that's going to be 18 to hit. That'll hit. Uh, so that first one's going to be 10 piercing. And make the concentration check. So that's a 17. And actually, I forgot. Okay. Yeah, you're good. Second attack. Next, next attack is a 19 to hit. That'll hit. So that'll be six piercing. Make another concentration check. It's a nat one. <laughs> and the giant suddenly shakes his head and, and like, six seems like kind of more mm-hmm. clear headed. His eyes fall on Zanoa immediately again, right in front of him. I take it back, don't run! <laughs> uh, third attack is going to fail, um, so then that brings us to the giant. Which starts with I, the- I already rolled his da- the damage. I rolled all three at the same time, so. Okay, what was his damage? His was 42. <laughs> 42? Yes. Okay. I kind of regret it, though. <laughs> <laughs> As he is just getting caught up uh, like the rest of them, he's, he also kind of takes a sidestep. And he is going to reach out with, all, with his arms. Uh, I need you to make a dexterity saving throw. Come on, bro. You got this. Roll out of the way. Roll out of the way. That's right. Charge it up. Six. A six? Uh huh. Okay. All right. Um. Okay, hold on one second. And I can't see through the walls. Can I? Elders, help me. What? I can't see through this wall at all. Girl, I'm about to drop that drink. Yeah. It did what it needed to do. Thanks. Oh, Caused a lot of damage. Yeah. So, he reaches down and just basically picks you up with all four arms with your, with you, like basically grabbing your head with one big hand, another arm with another, and both your legs with the other two and starts pulling in opposite directions. And you very quickly realize this is a problem, like a very serious problem very quickly. Uh, Sarek, you're up. <laughs> yeah, this is a very serious problem. Uh, all right. Well, bonus action. I'm throwing Hunter's Mark on the big forearm dude. Okay. I mean, I don't think I can really do anything else but hit. So I'm gonna shoot him. Okay. Yeah. Uh, 24 to hit. Yep. Uh, eight, six, uh, seven. Oh, um, 13 points of damage on the first one. <laughs> 13? Mm-hmm. Okay, he is looking very rough. Second shot. 14. 14 barely hits. <laughs> uh, 16 points of damage. 
At 16? Mm -hmm. With a sudden jerk back on his head, you shoot him directly in the eyeball as his, his inner arrow sinks into his skull. Uh, his nose suddenly dropped out of the air as you feel sudden relief as you literally... Zenoa, as you were falling through the air in just a flash of moment, you were like, I was literally like a second away from getting my limbs torn apart. <laughs> as the giant falls backwards with a puff of, of slush uh, and snow, uh, with a heavy thud, and moves no more. Could have been my final form. Wheelchair Zenoa. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, wrecked. Honestly, yeah. I would love that. <laughs> yeah. All right, so I'm going to move up towards Ohm and just to his left, and I'm going to action surge and take two shots at the guy to the right, right there. Um, yeah. You see you moving? Yeah, just, I'm going to go just to the left and behind Ohm. Uh, give me a second, I'll get it. Like here? Yeah, about right there. Oh, okay, sure. All right, and first shot. Mm, six, 16 to hit. Does not hit. Okay, they got some good armor. Yep. Yeah, he is. And they're moving surprisingly quickly, quickly for as heavy armor as they're wearing. They're using their shields skillfully. It is, they are. Yeah, um, so the 25 to hit on the second shot. Yeah, that hits. And 11 points of damage. Okay. He, uh, as you, as you plant a shot in his back, he looks like he is, you know, on his last leg. He is, he's hurt. The dude closest to you. Uh, yeah, the one that's just down to the bottom of so it, uh, still This one. Alright, that's so, that's David, everything. Would you be able to cast on the mage? <clears throat> yes, but I gotta get I gotta get these two guys going. Yeah. Just so you know. Cause I was curious. Zanoa. Okay. If you had <laughs> If you had not, um, if you had not been, if you had not been killed at the start of your turn here, you would have taken 52 points of damage. Mm. Would that have killed you? That would have took me out. You would have, been, if you had fallen to zero, you would have been ripped into four pieces. <laughs> oh, crap. <laughs> or even. <laughs> <laughs> Sarek is definitely the hero in that one. Yeah. <laughs> I think I'm one down. I think it's just, you can still get me by like two or three. I took one. Oh, what, would like to what? what would you like to do? Okay, I'm. Um, are you done? Yep, I'm done. I'm done. I'm gonna drop all those like blades. They're like various sizes, but they're all like a variation of her serrated dagger. Dropping those guys. Okay. Um, can I get to, I, I tried to look, it's pretty close. Can I, with my 30 feet of movement, um, go between my two allies and get to that guy within melee range of him? So to the guard? Uh, no. let's see. Um, yeah, no, I don't think so. Not without dashing. No, we're not doing that. Okay. Um, then I'll... I gotta move to up and to the left or wherever, kind of in that general area, but so that I have eyesight on that guy. Okay. Whatever you think. But still, I'll just keep my distance. Um, or actually. I'm gonna, I'm gonna not be that close. Sorry. Or if I back up, can I still see that guy? Or not really? Would I have to be that close? Uh, yeah, you could. Like you could. Where would you like to be? As far as I can be without, um, or with being able to see him. So yeah, I guess right there, wherever you're. 
Yeah, or arrow is. Here. That's fine. That's fine. Okay. Sure. Um, I'm gonna cast spiritual weapon and place it uh, on top of him. Mm-hmm. And attack with that first. That's a uh, twenty-one to hit him. Well, like, Larry and Danny's, like, stuff is, like, staying in place here. I can't really see the markers. What? Oh, like, your Larry and, like, your measurement box is staying up? Oh, we can't see him. Yeah, I don't have anything up. Uh, okay, give me a second. I'm trying to refresh because I literally can't even see that area at the moment. I'll refresh too just to see if it does anything on my end. Well, okay, <clears> refreshing <throat> helps. All right, so where do you want the where do you want the weapon? That's great, right there. All right. And it was a twenty-one to hit. Twenty-one hits. Yeah, refresh too. So that's uh, ten points of force damage. Ten points. Huh. All right. So as you materialize your spiritual weapon and it slashes down in a flash of lights, uh, you see a deep kind of glowing gash in his in his chest, and he just falls down. Great. Dead into the snow. Two down. Can. Ooh, and because of the weird that. size of this X, I'm going to just move him over here. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Like just pretend. Just to get him out of the way. Let's see. Can I use any more? I don't think I can. Oh, can I use any more of my movement actually to, or the rest of my movement to get closer to the bad guys? So behind the cart. That's so about. You can get to him out there. That's fine. I just want to be near everybody, just in case. <laughs> group near me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that brings us to home. So he'll run over and attack this guy. Come on, home. <laughs> everybody. Home. <laughs> <laughs> Check him on. <laughs> Join me in my yoga session. Homes for the poor. Just to clarify, Doug, I can't see either one of those bad guys, right? Because I technically have a sacred flame bonus action if I can see them, but if I can't, then never mind. Uh. I would give a give him cover. Nice so it's a tree. Yeah, uh, I'd give him like pretty good cover, but I I'd let you try. Yeah, of course. Yeah, I'll try. Okay, go for it. It's a deck save of seventeen. Oh, okay. So as you see, some parts of him, right? I'm just saying, creature that can see within range. You're not a cleric, you don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I would say That's she's a fail. She's throwing oh, shade, but she fail, 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 nice. fail, fail. Okay. Middle, middle, middle. 22? Damage? Holy shit! It says 3D8. He goes, he goes down. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> she rolled well. Oh yeah, at 11th level it's 3D8. That's fine. Oh my... It's okay, a well, roll will not go around. Okay, I'll do that. Well then, that changes what I was going to do. A flash of golden light flame. Uh, he, he goes down. Or actually, in his nose case, it would be kind of a cool blue flame. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, 
and so on will actually run over to the mage. Yep. We've got the all gang up on the mage. Can I hit? Oh my gosh. I've been, I've been hitting him slowly. Let's go. I'm going to kill this guy. I've been, I've been chipping on this kid. <laughs> You can see why he just trusts him too. Yeah, right, so you see why he took us. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh man. Um, yeah, I'm gonna turn my attention towards the mage, and uh, I'm gonna say something witty like, "You look a little parched," and I'm gonna cast blight. <laughs> you will look a little. Yeah, you will look. Put right. our <laughs> Oh, flashy tagline after attack. Right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Which is a con save of 16. <coughs> and that just affects him? Just a single opponent. That's why I only use it like it's one guy left and he's yeah. strong. So. Mm hmm. And then you got that. Um, so what, kind of, what kind of save is this? Con save. Con. Okay. Oh, but he's a war mage. Yeah, but I'm. I'm hoping. Because it's too bad. It's not our intelligence. Mm -hmm. there's, there's always a win on that dice, so yeah. that's why you gotta take the chance. Winnie. Yeah. Okay. That's right. That's right. So it's half damage. Right. Right. Yeah, it is. Yep, half damage. All right. Jesus, so many dice. Oh, there's a lot of ones in there. <laughs> It's a low ones, so that's five. There's ten. Twenty-four. Uh, thirty one. Thirty one. So thirty one halved. So fifteen. Thirty one halves? Yeah. What kind of damage is that? Never cry. So Unless he's a plant. Know. If he's a plant, it hurts a lot more. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually... <laughs> so as you see that greenish energy wash over him, and you see him kind of like grit his teeth and, and it kind of tense up as, as it washes over him and damages him and starts to suck some vitality out of him. You see it's it's... Again, you see that other kind of flash of energy sort of protecting him and counteracting this a little bit. Uh, oh, did he have it again? That's what he is. Okay. That brings us back to Asura. Uh, you do not have clear line of sight of him. I'm going to run back up to get up higher again. I'm going to use my movement to get, my, to get that height advantage again? Uh, that'll be a little bit of elevation. So let's see. Ten. So it's going to cost you extra movement. So that's 20. You could get to there. Does that give me uh, line of sight? No, not with not through the horses and everything else. Not really. Then I'll bonus action dash to give myself the remaining 30 feet that I, or whatever, whatever additional feet I need to get a clear line of sight. Yeah, another 20 feet there. Okay. To get there. Now, you won't be hidden, but you'll... That's okay. Jump be able to see him. <laughs> yeah, I'm literally, like, I literally just, like, get up and just, like, sprint. Jump on the horse. And, like, pull, and pull out, and then as soon as I get line of sight past these horses, I let go. Yeah. The duck. Yeah. So not with advantage, it'll just be a regular shot. Mm -hmm. Not 20! Oh, did you roll twice? Because it's not with advantage. Correct! She, she rolled once. I rolled one time. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. yeah. Cool. Let's serve for president. <laughs> All right, so Go. That was just a regular, regular shot, and you get to double it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, no, and I also get sneak attack because I have a friend within melee range. That's true. Yes, you do. Yeah. Just oh, right. Face. She's so happy. She's like, oh, <laughs> just, just tally, just tally. Okay. Six, six, six times three is eighteen. 
28, 29, 30, 38, 39, 40, 41, double, <laughs> 82. Good lord. Plus your damage modifier? Yeah, it's uh, 82. Oh no, it's 82 plus 83, 84, 85. 85 damage? Yeah. Ma'am. She rolled three sixes, two fives, and eight. Like, good. She just rocked his world. I'm sorry, I'm only good at one thing. <laughs> I can hit once! I can only hit once! You're on that 20, you are nasty. Yes, indeed. Because <gasps> it's all dice, not adders. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, very paladin. I have a lot of dice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Ooh, man. Mm -hmm. Okay. So as you as you whip around and shoot your shot at him, shoot your shot. Uh, you just see it just sink dead into into the back of his uh, in the back of his uh, cloak. Uh, or I guess I should say, how do you want to do this? Oh, it's it's it is beautiful. It is elegant. He has turned to like look at Orm, and I just like just silent as the snowfall <laughs> just come into sight, shoot it, and it just goes boop, boop, and it just comes through his face. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, as, as, from Orm's perspective, he just sees his head jerk forward as an arrowhead sticks out right in his <laughs> eye. As, as you see him getting ready and you see just the very faintest note of another fireball snap out of existence as the light leaves his eyes and he falls face forward into the snow. And as he falls down, you just see a syrup and just... Sh <laughs> hey. <laughs> Man. I just run up like, oh, you were so good in that fight. We couldn't have done it without you, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, he, he kind of turns and just like, just gives you this curt nod. Like he's, he's, he's like in business mode. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm right there with him. I'm kind of, I want to know what's in that uh, wagon. Yeah. No, before you go, Zanoa just walks up to you. Doesn't say anything, and she just like puts her arms around your waist Aww. and hugs you. <laughs> yep. You were, you were close. It, yeah. I got you. We're even. <laughs> <laughs> you, still, you still got. You brought me back to life a couple of times. We're close. I'll yeah. I'll get my bow uh, pulled together, and I'll circle back with Orm to open the. Uh, carry the carriage. Okay. And kind of like give him cover. Okay, so <clears throat> you see a very kind of heavily armored metal locked door uh, on the back. What would you like to do? Did you hear anything? Um... I'm, I'm, gonna gonna I'm gonna go up to it as well. well and just... I want to say someone check the bodies for keys. Yeah, I'll start checking. Well, no. Uh, I'll yeah. do that. I'll do that. Yeah, that's a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll, I'll check it too. I, yeah. Because there's no windows or doors, correct? There's no windows, no. Okay, while they're checking for keys, I'm gonna bang on the door and see if there's anybody that responds. Like if and like if there's a person inside. You bang the you bang on the door? Yeah. To see if anyone okay. responds. You bang on it and listen for a second. Nothing. Okay. Alright, so I guess we'll So whoever whoever's checking, roll an investigation check. Right, I'm guess, going to give advantage. Pray to Eldris and say wait, what's your investigation? Mine's plus eight. Oh, okay. Yep. Okay, I'll just say I'll just guide his hands to the set of keys and I'll cast guidance on you. So that's a, okay. a D4, yep. right? Okay. Uh, to the investigation. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, are you and you're helping me out with mm -hmm. it? Uh, yeah. Uh, just for giggles. Mm -hmm. uh, 21, 29. Oh my god. Yeah. Rolled really well. 29? Yep. Jeez. <laughs> okay. So give me all the uh, things, whatever I find, you know, keys included. 
Yeah, sure. We'll 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 get to looting sure. later. Um, anything else you want to do there? But uh, you you do find uh, a key on around the deck. Got it right here, guys. Under on the war mage. I figured it might be on him. Take it to right. sir. Here you go. Okay, I'll grab the key. Do a quick lens over to make sure there's not anything like set and trapped to the, like that. There's like not an additional element to this key besides just opening with a key. If there's any like trap pieces. Okay. I'll check if there's any magic at all. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's still be an investigation. So you can do separate ones for like regular traps and magical traps. <clears throat> or Arcana if you want. Some yeah, could I do an Arcana thing. check? Yeah, I'll allow that. Okay. Sure. And I got a 16 to check for traps. I got a 23 for magic. Okay. Um, uh, there doesn't seem to be any like norm, like mundane traps, uh, Asura. Okay. So Noah, you do feel like there's some sort of magical essence of, to the the wagon, like even as you kind of walk around it, but you're not sure what it is. The entire wagon is like radiating. Well, it's sort of that very same vague, this seems magical, like that you get from, uh, like, magic items. It is bigger on the inside. <laughs> um, I, I put the spell. key in the lock, and I turn it, and then I ask Orm to open it, and I have my bow cut. <laughs> <laughs> so once the door is open, like, if there's anybody inside. Yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Like you're firing if somebody's inside? No, like if, if if I find like someone's attacking us as soon as we open that door, I'm let I'm letting go. Okay. So with a certain position yourself with a bow drawn, um tet nods and takes the key as as you guys kinda of, you know position yourselves around the door, a set of black figures and white masks. Um <clears throat> He, without hesitation, open, you know, turns the key with a click and opens the door. And it's kind of surprising. Inside, you don't see any kind of supplies or shipment of any kind. You see light. You see what looks like a very nice, almost like a carriage. <coughs> like you see kitchen utensils, like some sort of very small almost like food type area with some shelves and food along the side of it. You see um, even some some like fresh flowers in a few different places. You see at the end, kind of further in, like a kind of small single um, velvet covered bed. And sitting on it, you see a cloaked humanoid figure with the hood drawn up. And as soon as the door opens, you see it flinch. And you hear Ohm say, out. And you see, uh, you see the figure uh, kind of like straighten its back a little bit. And you, you kind of see a movement like a sigh as it kind of like, you can almost like it's collecting itself. And then it, it stands up and walks, its hood still kind of drawn up, and starts walking towards the uh, the back and climbs out as you see a, um, you know, a woman's figure. And you see as she, as she, you know, steps down into the snow, you can, you can see her, uh, she reaches up and pulls her, her hood back, revealing very kind of light, almost silvery, uh, lightly curly, like kind of wavy blonde hair with this sort of very slender, very like kind of frail figure that's still very beautiful, but sort of this delicate beauty, like the slightest shove would break her. And you can see in her eyes just terror as she is looking around at these uh, cloaked and masked uh, figures around them. And you see, as she does, Om says, By the gods, 
That's Princess Vissette. And Zenoa, you hear this, but you're momentarily distracted because at her, you can see she's kind of squared her shoulders and there's like this moment of like trying to be brave but not doing very well at it. And you can see her hands are shaking at her side. And on her hand is a ring of Eldris. It's my buddy. Your ring. <laughs> and that's where we're gonna end up. Oh my god! Wait, what? Because I'm fucking hell! Bestie! Best to go from the. The country the girl. The yeah, the country girl. Yeah, on the balcony. The drunken country girl. Yeah, okay. That's what. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Yeah. 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 Oh
Thank yep. you, friends, for hanging out. Good night. Thank you, Doug. <laughs>